Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council Meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council Meetings, City Committee Meetings, Meeting Agendas, and other documents via the City website, www.ninagov.org. NENA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback. All right, well, welcome everyone. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Nina Common Council for Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. Uh, due to the public health emergency that's caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this meeting is gonna occur at a, uh, is occurring at a virtual locations. Uh, it's been properly noticed and all uh, Council members are present. Um, we also have members of the public who are joining us by conference telephone number or as part of the go to meeting. The first item will be the roll call. So, Stephanie, you want to take the roll call, or Jim, can we dispense with it and just uh, say that all members? are here present yes we can we can indicate that all are present based on the attendance of the committee of the whole official record will show that all members all members of the council are present uh the pledge of allegiance we do, uh we will do, uh I believe we did last time also we will uh dispense with that at this time until we get back in for our regular meetings because it's a little bit difficult to do on these virtual meetings. Uh, item number two, there are no introductions or confirmations of my appointments. Uh, item number three is approval of the council proceedings of May 6, 2020 regular session. Is there a motion? Move to approve. There's a motion by Alderman Lundrum, seconded by Alderman Steele to approve the council proceedings of May 6. Any discussion, corrections, additions? Seeing none, I'd ask you to have consent to approve the proceedings of May 6. Is there any objection to approving the minutes? Seeing none, that's so ordered. Are you guys hearing this feedback that I'm giving? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to try and turn my sound down a little bit, maybe. All right, I'll try that. Um, that better, man. Is that way better? Okay, I yeah. turned it way down. Now I won't be able to hear you, but that's okay. Uh, um, item number four is special uh, as a public hearings. There's two public hearings tonight. One is uh, item number A regarding a public hearing regarding a special use permit, 521 South Commercial Street. This is for a truck and trailer rental. We also have a special use permit for 112 Langley Boulevard for a wholesale vehicle sales. These went through Planning Commission. Uh, they're somewhat linked uh, as though they're next door to each other, uh, the same owner, I believe. So at this point, I will open up the special use permit public hearing on 521 South Commercial Street for a truck and trailer rental. Uh, is there anyone on the uh, website here that would like to say anything uh, or talk to the council with regards to this special use permit for 521 South Commercial Street? If there is, unmute your microphone and go ahead, state your name and your address, and we'll let you uh, talk to the council. Is 
Is there anyone here who would like to talk to the council from the public? Stephanie, they're able to unmute their own microphone. Is that correct? They should be if they're on the phone. I'm not sure how that works, but I don't know how they would have gotten muted because I didn't mute all or anything. Are you able to unmute all the callers on here? Yep. Can we ask can we ask uh, Jeff Bernice to unmute himself since we know he who he is and if, yeah, there we go. So he, if he can do it, they all can do it evidently. Right. Unless they're calling in, but I guess I wouldn't have names then. I'm not really sure how it works. Okay. I'll ask one more. I'll ask one more time if there's anyone on the, uh, that would like to uh, uh, speak to the council about uh, the special use permit for 521 South Commercial Street. Okay, seeing no one, I will close that public hearing. We'll go to the special use permit for 112 Langley Boulevard, which is a wholesale vehicle sales. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to the council on that public hearing? This is Scott Smith uh, for the Langley location. I'm just here to yes, answer yes. questions. Can you just give us your address, Scott, so we have it for the record? Uh, my home address or the home address, address is fine. What's that? Home address is fine. Uh, home address is 2513 Bishops Lane, Nina, Wisconsin. Okay. So you're you're just you're here if we have any questions, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, Alderman Coons, uh, you want to speak during the public hearing? Go ahead. I just have a question. I'm looking at, at my agenda and I don't see any public hearings not on there. Am I looking at a different agenda than everybody else? In the packet's not there. You have to go to the uh, Nina calendar and hit it through there. For some reason, the packet that or the, the this stuff didn't come through that way, the document. Okay. All right, thank you for your question. Anyone else like to speak to us on this? Uh, I think uh, we'll have Brad give us a little overview when we get to it then uh, before we vote. And Scott Smith, the owner of the property, uh, will be available for questions and we'll allow him to speak at that time if there are any questions directed to him, okay? I will close the public hearing. And we will move on to item number five, which is a plan commission report pertaining to the public hearing. And that will be given to us by Alderman Lang. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, reporting from the plan commission meeting of May 12th, minutes can be found on the city's website. The commission recommends council approve a special use permit for a truck and trailer rental sales business located at 521 South Commercial Street subject to the conditions of the approval letter and based on the submitted site plan. The use shall have no more than four rental trucks on the north end of the site and three trailers along the south end of the site, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Lang. Is there a second? I'll second. Alderman, uh, I'm sorry, there were like three hands. Alderman Boyette seconds. Uh, discussion on the uh, special use permit. This is for the one on Commercial Street, Alderman Bates, and then Alderman Boyette. Thank you, Mayor. Earlier today, I talked to Brad Schmidt and I asked him about the uh, site type fence along the western boundary of this, since it's right up against somebody's driveway and uh, the house is on the other side. I, I was wondering if he was able to contact that homeowner to make sure that, you know, it's not going to uh, box them in too much. Yeah, I did reach out to the homeowner. Um, they did not uh, respond and uh, I was unable to leave a message. But in addition, we did send out notices to all property owners within 200 feet. So they did receive that as well. Uh, Alderman Boyette. Thank you. I'm just curious what type of uh, truck rental, is this like a U-Haul or a rider truck or something like that? 
Yeah, it's it's U-Haul. They've been operating there for probably close to a year illegally. So this it requires a special use permit. So that's why they're here. Okay, great. Thank you. Allegedly illegal, Brad. Alderman Coons. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I don't want to get too much in the nuance of Planning Commission. Having been on there a long time, I understand what they do. Not that everyone, everyone, I, I, I uh, believe understands what they do. But what, what I do have is a larger issue with uh, conceptually, and that is, um, I guess I would ask either um, Director Hayes or Deputy Director Schmidt. It, it, I know you, you've been working on a plan for Commercial Street, and my gut question is, would this be kind, the kind of service you would either allow and or want as part of that plan? It doesn't seem to me to be. So I, I guess I'd ask that question. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to get to that level of detail. I know one of the things that at least Chris and I or Director Hayes and I have talked about is looking at a specific sort of neighborhood zoning district um, as opposed to just the general C1 district, which is, you know, encompasses everything from South Commercial Street all the way out to Green Bay Road and, and the highway oriented businesses out there. So, um, you know, we're not excited about these uses. Uh, they this tend to pop up. I mean, we see them in several spots in the city. Um, so it's something that we can look at. I don't know that we've got to that level of detail quite yet. And, and then if I just follow up, I mean, this site also then allows um, they usually have someone that sells t-shirts and tie-dye stuff in a little spot next to where these trucks are going to go. I'm assuming that's still allowed and still part of it is um, what their operation is at that site. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm assuming that's just a, a third party who uses the site. I don't think it is affiliated with the gas station at all. Um, I don't believe that we regulate that use. Uh, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. Vendor permit. Okay. And, and I only say they're affiliated, they're, they're very much affiliated because it's on their site. So um, my concern is it looks it, at some point, um, it looks a bit more like a carnival than a business, if, you know, with all these other businesses tied on to a very small piece of property that sits in one of our more visible areas. Um, kitty corner to this, we put a nice gorgeous sign that says, welcome to Nina and uh, you know, in the downtown and all these kinds of things. It's a, it's the entrance to our bid. It's so many things. I, I, I just, you know, it's, this is a special use permit. So this is a little different than everything else. This is one of, this really gets into what do we want? Not so much what, what do we allow, which is what mostly what planning commission, planning works with, what do we allow? This is what we want to have. At least, at least the way I see it from a special use standpoint. And I'm not sure this is what we want. Um, is it, um, might be what we allow, but certainly not what I'm thinking is in the best interest of, of further development and commercial. Thank you for your question, Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was reading in the minutes that I believe it was one of the uh, committee members asked about the front landscaping there. Is that something that's gonna be going on with this and my second question would be is is this a forever thing that once we give it to them since it's a business it's it's there until we have a reason to really take it away or is it at the uh, discretion of the city well with the special use we can add certain conditions uh, with the use and one of the conditions was to require the front landscaping strip along south commercial street I think one of the things that that does it does help buffer a little bit and improve the site and bring it up into compliance with a special use permit, the council does have the ability to revoke it if they don't follow the conditions, whether that's putting up the fence um, or if they're having more trucks out there than the four that were allowed um, or, or some other factors as well. But we do have a little bit more control over in the future. Now, is the fence, it, is there like a standard of, of um, quality to it in the sense that if after 10 years it is half blown down or hit with a snow plow or whatever we can um, yes yeah thank you hmm. okay Senior Mike Erickson. Um, 
I tend to agree with Alderman Coons on this. I don't think this is an ideal business to have at that location. And I've also noticed there is a similar um, truck rental on the island um, by um, that frame shop warehouse. And yep. I was wondering if that has that one has a special use permit as well, or is that one operating without the? Yeah, so I think it was back in late 2018 we actually brought a code update which which changed this use from a permitted use, which is allowed by right with site plan review, to a special use, which gives us a little bit more authority to you know, add the conditions and to really look at how that use fits on the site. Unfortunately, the state has really taken away a lot of our local control with denying special uses. So in order to deny a special use, you really need to um, hit a high bar, which in this case, I don't think that we can do that. What about the site on, that, does that one have a special use permit? It does not, it, it has a site plan review as does Kruger's as well. How are they different? So again, every district has a list of permitted uses which are allowed by right. You cannot deny it. Um, they are allowed to operate generally with some site plan review. A special use requires a little bit more oversight to really understand how that use fits within that neighborhood. And then you can add special conditions to that use into that property to alleviate any potential problems that may have uh, might, might occur with the use. So that's why we added the landscaping and, and the fence requirement. If this was just a site plan review, we may not have been able to do that. All right. Thank you for your questions. Uh, other questions or comments? Alderman Coons, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I'm a little um, saddened to hear it. I mean, it's, to me, the special use permit that gives us a bit more ability, but if we are unable to deny anything uh, within a reason, um, I worry that we should set new standards for truck rentals in my mind, you should have enough space that allows for that truck rentals without it being um, a little too tight, a little too in people's space, a little too um, too much. I mean, what happens is these properties are basically utilizing, you know, the more we the more we enhance an area, the more it brings to them, and they can and then then you haul whatever else can start cramming their trucks in everywhere they want. There's got to be enough space, and there isn't clearly here in my mind to have enough space to do this and do this well and make it look nice for everyone else. Meanwhile, we're trying to do some great things. We have some great businesses um, who've done a dynamite job of expanding and and you know buying up properties and making it look nice. And it just this just doesn't this doesn't bode well with that. I think it's a step backwards. And if you're telling me we put ourselves in a position where we can't do much about it, I'm going to say shame on us. Um, we shouldn't put ourselves in this position because I don't think we have to. Maybe we can come up with a set of rules that make it difficult to put these in places that that, that aren't suitable. If, if we follow them here, I don't know where else you can't put them in except for a residential area because there's just not enough room on these spots. But I, I, I digress. I, I understand the, the, what we have in front of us. Uh, which is an unappealing a process of of bugging our nose again and having to go with what we have in our system as if we don't control our own system. So I'm frustrated. That's all. Alderman Boyette. Question, do we have the ability to limit the number of vehicles that they put on that lot? And And I'm asking only because Generally speaking, I've known of these rental places where they basically have one or three trucks to show the difference in size, and then they order the vehicles when they're rented to come in, so they don't really stage them on those lots. So if if I'm just wondering, can we limit with this special permit the amount of vehicles that they can stage? Yes, and actually the plan commission did limit the number of trucks to no more than four on the north end of the site and no more than three trailers on the west end of the site per their site plan. Okay, and then the, um, and I'm trying to get a uh, mind on this site in general. So that 
individual that gets the permit and sells the t-shirts and everything, are they gonna be allowed in that same area as well? I don't know the process for obtaining those permits. Um, I would imagine one of the, the, yeah, one of the things we, I'm sure that we'd look at is that, that it's not impacting traffic flow. It's not impacting uh, minimum parking. Um, so again, I don't know how those permits are issued. I don't believe they're issued by our department. So who issues them then? Is that something they go through the state to get? I think believe, Stephanie. Yeah, the clerk's office. I have and I have not done um, a permit for that vendor, but I'm not sure. Is it the is it a mobile vendor? Is it a solicitors? Do you probably a vendor? solicitors? They sell T-shirts, Stephanie. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, with that, we um, it's not intended for a stationary sale. Our solicitors permit is for door to door. Um and kind of mobile going from shop to shop and trying to sell their stuff. So that might be something we can look into if they, if our solicitor's permit is not meant for that, we could look into that. I'm not positive. Well, the, the, on the, tra the, the transient merchant or uh, uh, permit, which is a, a twin to the solicitors, it does provide for transient merchants like this so we, we we do issue them from time to time but uh i'm not sure if that's been if they've made an application in this particular case where could we find that out from we'll have to check the we'll have to check our our, our records here uh, tomorrow morning thank you yeah I mean, one of the things just looking at the site plan where they're proposing the trucks and where they're going to have to put landscaping i think it's going to be very difficult for that vendor to locate on that site um, but with that said, there's nothing that would prohibit council for adding a condition that would prohibit any of those solicitors or vendors on the site as well. Yeah, transient merchants. Alderman Bates, did you have a question or comment? Yeah, um, this is a follow-up to Alderman Erickson's uh, question. We have, as you said, on the island and at Kruger's that they have the same sort of truck situation, but they just had a, a uh, site review as opposed to this why did this one rise to the level of needing this now and those don't have to or will they have to it was because of those that we changed the code in 2019 to require a special use permit so will those other two need to be getting them then no the grandfather. they were under the old rules that's so, right they grandfathered in but I think you said that he was already parking his things over there. Did they have something or no? The Krugers and the one on the island were operating prior to the change in the ordinance. So they're grandfathered. Oh, and so this guy, this particular business just started up after that. Right. And, mm -hmm. and because Illegally. of those two operations and the prolification of these types of uses, we moved it kind of to Alder, Alderman Kunz's point and Alderman Erickson, we moved it to a special use permit to provide this higher degree of review. It doesn't right. allow us to, to necessarily not allow them, but it gives us more teeth, if you will. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? If uh, uh, Alderman uh, Erickson, go ahead. You gotta unmute yourself, Alderman Erickson. There you Brad. go to have the map i didn't see that in our packet or maybe i missed it but could you share your screen with the map yeah stephanie can you give me that so this is the site plan that they had submitted um so the north end of the site is over here you see the three trucks and the west end of the site here is where the um, fence and the, the trailers would be. The I think the rationale be, behind requiring no more than four and no more than three trailers was that there may be times when a, a truck or a trailer is dropped off, um, which gives a little bit of flexibility to have that extra one on the site. And where does the landscaping go? Right here. So South Commercial Street's right here. Um, the Galloway's parking lots to the left of, of here and the um, convenience store is just to the north of here. So the landscaping would go generally in this area. 
it from my recollection of the spot that gas station is on a very small piece of property it almost looks bigger on your illustration than it mm -hmm. is so here's a, a different here's a street view of it so the trucks would go in this area that landscaping would generally go right here so they, they do that 10 uh, feet of landscaping, which would again help buffer it. And there's already some landscaping on that north property line right here. Okay. <clears throat> the absence of the mayor, I'll recognize all the person yet. So one last question where you were just doing that street view where the trucks would be um i mean it, it appears in in at least in my mind that there would be plenty of room there my question is where is the business going to operate out of are they going to run the sales and, and rental out of the gas station or is there going to be a separate location where they phone people and meet them there or how exactly is this going to yeah. work? It's my understanding how this works is that U-Haul has a contract with the the property owner, in this case, the gas station. The gas station operates as the um, the person that would rent out the trucks. I think everything's done online. The actual exchange of um, of the keys for the trucks is all done at the gas station. So uh, that's I mean it's a good business model for U-Haul because they don't really have to do anything, and then uh, the gas station owner gets you know, a, a, a bit of the, the revenue off the truck sales or leases. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Alderman Bates, go ahead. So if this is uh, running trucks in trailers in that area and it's right next to a residential, was there a cutoff time for when they could be pulling things in and pushing trailers around? there wasn't that wasn't discussed um i don't know what their hours of operation are Could i'd imagine they'd be consistent with the gas station they're open till 10 p.m i was just worried that if they had a truck delivered in the middle of the night or whatever could we ask mr smith he's not the applicant oh. he's not the applicant sorry he is for the next uh oh, the sorry. next one Oh, so the applicant's not here? No, no. I think, yeah. All right, anyone else? Uh, I think we'll keep an eye on it uh, once it gets going and see how, uh, if we have any issues. Uh, I go there regularly. I know the owner and He's, they seem to be willing to be good neighbors. So if I think if we have any problems or anything, uh, hopefully we can try and address it with them then and you know to an acceptable resolution. But um, all right, so there is a motion and a second. Um, the motion. Uh, we, Planning Commission did add that uh, there'll be no more than four rental trucks on the north end and three trailers on the south end of the site. Uh, there was a motion and a second. All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no as your name is called. Alderperson Lendrum? Aye. Steele? Aye. Boyette? Aye. Erickson? No. Bates? Aye. Coons? Aye. Lang? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Bellman? Aye. Motion carries 8-1. That motion passes 8-1. to one. Thank you. Uh, item number two, go ahead, Alderman Lane. Thank you, Mayor. Commission recommends council approve a special use permit for a wholesale and retail used vehicle sales business located at 112 Langley Boulevard, subject to the conditions of the approval letter, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Lane. Is there a second? Alderman Stevenson seconds. 
Um, so this uh, this is the property that uh, the two adjacent properties, uh, and Mr. Smith is here, uh, but the this uh, special use permit is only for 112 Langley Boulevard. He currently operates the facility on Commercial Street also, so uh, that is next to it, Smith Automotive, uh, directly across from the uh, coffee shop there. Questions? There is a motion on the floor. So anybody? Alderman Stevenson, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, everybody hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so the the use that is currently occurring uh, on the Commercial Street site sounds very similar to the uh, intended use based on the special use permit. Um, is is could this same thing have been accomplished by? And I understand why you might want want to do this, but could the same thing have been accomplished by? Um, merging the two sites? Uh, this is a similar situation in that auto sales prior to 2019 were permitted uses. So Smith Auto was a permitted use allowed by right that we reviewed at site plan review. In 2019, we required a special use permit. So in your scenario, um, no, if they would have expanded the use, we would have required a special use. Um, this use is actually a little bit different. So at his current site of Smith Auto on South Commercial Street is strictly retail. He bought this Langley property a few years ago to kind of use for overflow. His intent now is to go um, strictly wholesaling as opposed to retail sales. Alderman okay, Erickson. Oh, I'm sorry, Todd, you done? Um, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Alderman Erickson. Brad, can you show us the map of that location? Yep. I'll start by showing his site plan that he had submitted. Um, this is Langley Boulevard on the right side of the screen, the buildings uh, towards the left. He is proposing to add landscaping uh, between the two driveways along Langley. Uh, the two driveways on Langley are currently gravel. Those will be brought into um, uh, or, uh, hard surface, so asphalted. He will be adding landscaping on the uh, west end of the property on the north or on the top part of your screen here. Um, there's, a, I believe, a single family or a duplex to the north. Uh, there's already a, currently a fence here, um, and then there'd be additional landscaping in the rear as well. So he's, he's bringing the site into compliance, um, much like he did with his Smith Auto uh, 15 years ago. So where is this in regard to the neighborhood? Do you have a map of? Yep. Okay. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, so the property is just to the west of the current Smith Auto. Uh, it's been used as um, a machine shop or some heavier industrial use for a long, long time. I think probably even going back into the 1950s. So the current Smith Auto site's right here. Um, it's used for retail sales. As you can see, all the cars that are for sale are on the, the front of the property along South Commercial Street. And then he has some excess on the property that we're, we're, that's in question today at the Langley site, um, which he would be using as wholesale. So the wholesale is a little bit different in that he's not gonna need the space for um, auto sales display. Um, it's more he goes out and finds the car that customer be, may be looking for, brings it back, fixes it up, and then sells it directly to that customer. So it's a little bit different model, and it doesn't require, again, the, the display lot that his current site has. Um, as you can see, the site is um, founded by commercial on, on three of its sides and residential on the west side. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> you good? Are you good, Alderman Erickson? Yes, I'm, I guess I'm surprised. I had always thought I'd been by it many times, but I thought it was like a auto repair shop. I didn't realize there were, um, it was like an auto sales um, location. It, I just don't know. Yeah, I think it's both. Okay. Anyone else? Alderman Bates, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Brad, would the um, fence that's the uh, stockade type fence over on the west side, would that be the the business's per, uh, own ownership or the neighbor's? 
I believe he, uh, the applicant actually installed that or, or, or assisted in the installation of that um, fence when he originally purchased the property a few years ago. Um, the fence would be the responsibility of, of this property owners if something were to happen to it. No, is it on his property or on the neighbor's property? I believe it's on his property. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? I would just add, uh, I said in plan commission, uh, you know, th this particular property owner on South Commercial Street has always kept his property up, you know, pretty darn well and uh, continues to maintain it uh, in a uh, suitable, good fashion. In my opinion, I drive by it a lot. So um, it's going to be a little bit different business model, but uh, they take good care of it. Marge? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, one last question. Um, the sign that seems to be in front of that second business uh, it looks like kind of a pole with a sign on one side and a light on the other. Is that stay, go, or? My understanding is the, the sign stays. He may put a sign face within the sign, but the sign is going to stay. Okay. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the special, approving a special use permit for a, a wholesale and retail use vehicle business uh, located at 112 Langley Boulevard, subject to the condition of the approval letter, will signify by saying aye. All polls will signify by saying no as your clerk uh, calls your, the roll. Alderperson Steele? Aye. Boyette? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Bates? Aye. Aye. Lang? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Spellman? Aye. And Lundrum? Aye. Motion carries 9 0. That motion carries 9 to 0. Um, that takes care of the public hearings. Uh, item number six is public forum. The public forum is an opportunity for anyone who's online or uh, within the council chambers if they would like to speak to the council and the mayor on any subject that's either on the agenda or any subject uh, that they would like. Uh, we ask that you give your name and your address, uh, all that is for the record. Um, and so we, uh, we'd like to have that. And then uh, you can speak on anything uh, for up to five minutes. Five minutes is a long time. So um, at this point, I will open the public forum. Uh, is there anyone online who would like to speak to the council on any topic? Is there anyone in the council chambers who would like to speak to the council? Come on up to the computer and microphone. State your name and address. Hi, Paula Pitch at 210 Main Street, Nina. I am back uh, to thank you for listening to us last week and making a motion about our liquor licenses and hoping that that motion still is in progress. And also, I, this last week, I've had a chance to talk with some bar owners and um, it's a tough go. Some of them that have opened, you know, some for a few days, some for, you know, a week maybe, but it's been tough. The clientele is not coming back right away. There's a lot of people afraid of it yet. And uh, so we're hoping that you continue with that motion for a liquor license to bring it down to the $60 as we had talked. And then um, I don't know that you're going to be able to or if you can do anything about the bartender's licensing. They had asked me if there's any way that they might get a reduction if their license is due this year. I think they pay $60 for two years, but uh, they were just wondering if there's a chance of them getting some kind of a break on that too. And uh, and then there was also some talk this week about uh, extending the outdoor um, spots, that, the bars that we have. We'll, roping them off or something just so we can keep some more social distancing. As the weather is getting nicer and people want to go out, uh, I think that a lot of them will want to sit outside. So if we can make our areas just a little bit bigger for just temporary until uh, we know exactly what's going on, we'd appreciate it. And uh, 
the licenses is, is really important to a lot of us. I've talked to them and they're struggling. I mean, some of them are really struggling to open and get things going, you know. So if you can keep that going, we'd sure appreciate it. And thanks for having us last week too. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, your comments. Anyone else here would like to address the council? Come on up, Don. Uh, hello, uh, Don Shunk, 129 North Green Bay Road, ICU Bar and Grill. Um, I would have been here last week, but I was out of town, um, so I apologize for that. But I just wanted to let uh, this kind of make my feelings known that things are really tough right now. Even though we've been open for takeout food um, during this whole thing, uh, it's basically hemorrhaging money. Uh, we did that so we could keep our employees um Put some money in their pocket and keep them going so they wouldn't have to go into unemployment and in doing so we were able to do this for a couple of months but it's it's really been a tough go um it's the uh, it's not a good business plan to have a takeout service only business there's, there's no way you can make a living doing that um that being said um you know my my uh, also my real estate property taxes are due at the end of this month that's going to be another thousand dollars i have to come up with i don't want to shirk my responsibilities for taxes I'm just asking if we can, during this whole COVID situation, if we could just get a break, possibly, on some of these uh, licensing fees is all I'm asking. Um, just for one year, we've always paid our licensing fees um, for our games and for our, our, our liquor license and everything else. So we're not trying to shirk a responsibility. We're just asking for a little bit of help. Um, we've only been open for full business only one day. We started yesterday and the business the people aren't coming back as quick as everybody thinks that they are they're just not there and it's understandable and i i support everybody's decision and how they want to get through this virus but um it's not like we're open for business and we're and we're doing a lot of business right now so we're just asking for a little bit of relief um i'm not sure if you guys know about my place i see bar and grill but i don't have uh, any room for a lot of room for a big patio but I do have room for a small patio, if possible, just for a couple of months to try to help get people back in and so that we can pay our bills and we can pay our taxes and we can stay on top of all that stuff without falling behind on, on anything. So um, I'm just here hat in hand, hoping that you guys will be able to do something for us just to give us any kind of relief would be much appreciated. So I just wanna let you guys know that and that's about all I have. Thank you very much uh, for your comments, Don. Anyone else? Lori, come on up, say hi. Hi, I'm Lori Davis from the Short Branch Saloon, 1102 Harrison Street. And I was here last week with Paula for our uh, discount on our license, which I really appreciate. Uh, we are having a hard time. And then also not, none of us here have got any help from the states for the small business loans and nothing like that either. So it really make a big difference. We can get a discount on our license and get taxes and so forth. Um, and even the bartender license. I said a lot of these people didn't have other jobs and something to fall back on. So a lot of them are hurt at this time. So I really appreciate it and thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else? Just for the record, uh, Stephanie, we also are joined by Kathy Plath also from the Short Branch uh, Saloon is here. Um, seeing no one else, I will close the public forum. And we will, is there anyone on the, on the line that would like to speak during public forum before I close it? All right, seeing no one, I'll close the public forum. And item number seven is mayor council consideration of any public forum issues. Is there any questions or anything on public forum issues? Uh, Alderman Bates. There Thank you, you Mayor. I was going to ask the uh, owner of the ICU or the um, Short Branch, when you have your uh, businesses open, are you planning on limiting the number of people coming in? We, on the committee, we recognized that it wasn't going to be a uh, full opening for a while now. That's why we cut it so much. And I was just wondering, so are you kind of planning that when you do start getting people in, will you have a limit on how many you'll let in the business? Well, right now what we're doing, we're doing, uh, we have signs on both doors, social distancing. Um, we have all our tables at least six feet apart. 
Um, I've also put a quite a bit of expense in the um, plexiglass partitions. In between the whole bar, there's plexiglass partitions so that nobody can talk. You, you can't cough on anybody or do any of that. And that was quite a bit of an expense, but I thought it was worth it to keep everybody safe, not just my customers, but also my staff, because they're very important to me. So without them, I couldn't do what I do. So. so if you saw an entire group of people come in and just cram the whole place, would you kind of well, advise people to, to move away? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, I'm not exactly sure uh, what would happen. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, we're not promoting uh, a big party. We're not uh, putting things on Facebook of, come on, let's party, let's have a band. We're just trying to get back open. Um, we do serve a lot of food. Um, you know, we're not, uh, you know, we serve uh, booze, beer, and food. But, um, you know, we're doing our best to keep everybody distances. I took out the pool table, so that would give even more distance between, between uh, tables. And like I said, I did all the plexiglass that we uh, built ourselves. We went to Menards and bought all the all the uh, materials for it. Now it's quite expensive, but we feel that it's the right thing to do to keep people safe. So right now, that's what we're doing uh, as now. We don't have anything in place. If you've ever been to my place, you know it's not that big. So we really don't have big crowds of 100 people. I mean, we're more of a 25-person bar. So um, yesterday was our first day opening. People did come out for it. And um, there was a lot of social distancing, and it was not uh, packed by any stretch of the imagination. So that's Thank about you. all I have on that. Thank you. Alderman Coons, go ahead. Thank you. Director Hayes, do we still have small business loans available for small businesses in Nina? We do have small business loans available, but, but probably not what they would be looking at here. The mayor can probably explain the... Uh, there is a loan program available through Winnebago County that is similar to the PPP program that was mentioned. It is a loan. It's not a grant. Low interest loan, 2%, uh, up to $10,000 for businesses like the three bars that are in the chambers. Um, the It's administered through Winnebago County. They review the loans on Tuesday and award the, words, award the loans on Thursday. So they do that every week. I know we've had probably at least a half a dozen or more Nina businesses apply and receive those loans. So um, we're happy if they want to leave information with the mayor, we're happy to, to get that information to those folks in case it's something that might be of use to them. There is, there's, also, there's also a deferment, Alderman Coons. They don't have to start paying that loan back until December. Uh, so that hopefully they'll be back on their feet. Uh, and then at that point, it's 2% uh, a two percent loan. You have anything else? All right. All right. Anyone else on uh, Mayor Council uh, consideration? If not, uh, I will close that. We will move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move to approve that consent agenda. There's a motion by Alderman Lundrum, seconded by Alderman Stevenson to approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, uh, I would ask unanimous consent to approve the consent agenda. Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, that's so ordered. Item number nine is reports of standing committees, a regular public service and safety committee meeting of May 12, 2020. Chairman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. This is the committee your... recommends council approve the, for the <clears throat> next year. The class B intoxicating Liquor license fee be reduced from $350 to $50. The Class B malt beverage license fee be reduced from $100 to $10. And late fees be waived, and I would so move. Second. There's a motion by Alderman Bates, seconded by Alderman Lendrum. Uh, discussion on this item or questions. Um, the one question I had when I was preparing today was, it says late fees will be waived, but is there a deadline? Is there, is there, they gotta pay by some time before we either waive it or don't give them their license. So we should probably put uh, some something in there. Alderman Bates and then Alderman Coons. That was my question as well as, um, question as well as, you didn't um, 
Hey, at any particular point, is there a time hey, frame that it does cancel? Is there a time frame that it does cancel? Yeah. Well, I would, uh, Alderman, well, it will, uh, Alderman will answer those well, questions well, uh, or someone will. Alderman, uh, or or Stephanie, uh, Alderman Cheslack, Stephanie you have uh, an answer? Cheslack. Um, to answer that, um, the late fee was new last year, and it was only for people who did not pay the publication fee by April 15th and turn in their paperwork. Um, so that is where that late fee comes into play. The rest of the payment needs to be made in full before the license is issued. So before I actually mail it out to them, I need full payment received. So okay. in, in, effect, in effect, Mayor and Council members, the, the if it's not paid by June uh, June thirtieth, they don't have a license beginning July first. Okay, Alderman Coons. Thank you, Mayor. I, I I love this idea, but I also want to um, be aware of the costs because ultimately we're dealing with taxpayer dollars. Um, my understanding, first of all, was that we probably I thought we couldn't change these fees. I thought they were set by the state, as they seem to get so involved in in, in these licenses. But I assume the dollars that that the amount we charge is like all our fees. It's meant to be designed to to meet our costs to administer these the, these licenses. Is that correct, Jim? I think you said yeah, that's correct, but he's muted. But uh, you muted that is right. I I got to watch the red symbol there. Sorry about that. So so if we lower these fees, we have we'll assume we have costs there, but we're not going to get the money back. Again, I'm not extremely worried about it. I don't, I don't think it's going to add to a whole lot, but I do at least want to I don't know be aware aware of that. With what that would be it. The number of licenses here I know is relatively small. Um, I'm not too worried about it, but. Am I missing anything in that there, there's, this is going to represent a few thousand dollars maybe um, in potential lost revenue for the city? Uh, it, it will be several thousand dollars. Uh, I, I, I can look it up in the budget. I don't have that in handy right at the moment. $25,000 line item in revenue. Good. Okay. But this will not cost 25 or Mike, you, is there an estimate on, or Mike or Todd, I think one of the two of you had an estimate on this, uh, this uh, proposal. It's $25,000, but it doesn't include the, um, all of the other kind. If we're only going to be doing the class B liquor, excuse me, it's not going to count. The class doesn't include all the class A's and the other types of fees. But we're proposing to change to just class B beer and class B liquor, if I remember correctly. That's correct. And we know we only have 38 of the one. And so I'm not sure. I just wanted to ask the question. I don't want to I don't want to get way to the nitty gritty on this one. I think it's a great idea. I think the cost is minimal. So that, that was my only I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. So thank you. Okay. Other comments or questions? Alderman Stevenson, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, uh, I I am all for, as a matter of fact, as evidenced by my efforts to help uh, reduce the um, uh, late fees for property taxes of the county. Um, I am all for recognizing and helping and, and working in tandem with our investment partners within the city of Nina who choose to invest there the dollars here uh, and to risk those dollars as all business does. Um, but we're also at risk and, and we have costs and we have unknowns. And Mike, I, yeah, I, I fall asleep to it every night. 87% of our revenues are safe. 17% of our revenues are not safe. Um, so I, I, in committee, I, had uh, comments that what is the right amount? Is 100% correct? I, I originally proposed that we reduce the licensing fee by whatever the percentage of time 
that the the establishments were not able to be open. Um, and I and, and other con and other committee members shared that the startup time and all these other costs that, that it isn't going to be you know two months out of twelve or one sixth of the time. It it could be more significant. But I but we're also at risk. Uh, we don't know where, where our park program is going to be. The pool is going to open. Uh, where our other revenues are going to be. And I think for us, it's just simply waive these um, is is not the right strategy. Uh, I would strongly suggest that we consider a 50% reduction in the fees and postpone uh, payment if we can for six months or eight months, let the businesses get established, you know, back on their feet. And when they're back up and doing it, and, 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 and if they're not, then we can reconsider waiting it eight months or six months from now. But um, I, I, we have responsibility to taxpayers as well as to those that invest in our community because they all pay taxes. Um, I, I don't think that we're going to, if, if taxpayers came in here and asked for a reduction in the taxes, I don't think we're going to do that. I don't think we can do that. So I would I would strongly suggest uh, that we look at a 50% reduction, but I'm willing to listen to other comments if there are any. All right, thank you, Alderman Stevenson. Alderman uh, Steele. Yeah, I don't I don't know I don't have a suggestion for what the right amount is, but this is. Um, but if businesses go under, they're not going to be paying any taxes. Um, not that the difference between a full license fee and a decreased license fee is going to make the difference from a, for a business surviving or not. But I think what we can do to help them survive this time is beneficial to the city long term. I, I, I don't have I don't have the right answer. I don't know how long this is go on, going to go on. I don't know what it's going to take. For these businesses to um, get on their feet again, but um, but I think it's just worthwhile thinking about what we can do, and, and in terms of long term, what's going to be beneficial for the city and for the taxpayers. Um, so it's not an either or, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. All right, thank you for your comments, Alderman Boyette. Thank you. Uh, I tend to agree with the whole scenario of this. I, I do want to help as many people as we can without sinking our, our own ship. However, I, I wasn't in the committee meeting, so I'm not sure what the conversation was about the bartender licenses for those people. Because, again, those are some of the people we're talking about that are going to be lower on the pay scale and going to be financially hurting more so than or equal to the bar owners that are getting. The other permit so i i just i just kind of wonder like you know if we're going to help out one group we probably need to remember and make it fair for all so just my two cents all right thank you alderman bates thank you mayor i i i agree with alderman stevenson that we're kind of flying in the dark right here because we don't know how it's going to turn out um, I was going to ask the city attorney whether or not there is a capability of postponing license payments and maybe just making it, you know, we set a low rate for the first half and then we see how things are, are happening at the second half. I'm just concerned that when Alderman or uh, Deputy Cheslock said that we don't give them their license till they actually pay, that if people would be getting licenses and then they we don't have any recourse to get the money out of them at all and they'd be running a license. So. Uh, Jim, are we able to postpone? No, there's no oh. authorization in the statute to do that. It, it provides for a license fee. It has to be paid in full in order to get the license uh, on July 1st. Okay. Alderman Coons. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I, I thought all of and uh, Stevens had a great idea of postponing it until I found out you can't do it. Um, because one thing, um, the issue for a lot of people is really cash flow more than anything else. And, I, it, it, and there is where we were able to help, help probably the most um, in that we could help do that. But that, that's off the table. As far as the amount and percentages and all these other kind of things, 
Um, to me, I don't want to. I don't want to spend forever trying to find a little detail. We're, we're not talking huge amounts of dollars. Um, I think what we've laid out seems reasonable. If someone wanted to change the numbers slightly, I'm not going to be upset about it. Um, but and I also share um, all of President Stevenson's um, concern about budget. It's something I brought up as well. What I've been told over and over again is that not worry about it. We as a committee, finance committee, hasn't haven't met and assume, and apparently have nothing to talk about for the last several months. So obviously, no one seems to be concerned about the budget. I happen to be, um, and uh, but I, I, I'm not sensing that um, um, from the from the city standpoint. Um, and I don't know all the details. And maybe maybe I'm not. I shouldn't be as concerned. Um, so it, it, it's it's a battle unless unless um, someone gives me a reason to be concerned about the budget um, while I'll still be concerned I, I, I they, they need to help drive that and say here's what the problem is and but that's not what I'm hearing um, so I, I go back for the numbers the discounts might be a little high but I don't know if it's a big concern what they're not asking for is they're not coming to us and saying I want a reduction on the tax I pay on my building if they own the building or you know any of those kind of Kinds of things. Um, they're just looking at the license to, to run it. It's the one of one of the few things I think that we can control in, in in a limited fashion. So I'm fine with what's laid out there. If someone wants to tell us something slightly different, I'd probably be fine with that too. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Coons. Anyone else have any comments, questions, or suggestions? Alderman Stevenson, do you have any motions? Or all, uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to amend the uh, current motion to, rather than waving down to the 50 and 100 level, that we waive 50% of it. So the three, the $50 recommendation would become 175, which is half of 350, and the $100 fee for the Class D malt license. Rather than being moved from 100 to 10, would be going from 100 to 50 dollars. Second. Alderman Stevenson moves, seconded by Alderman Bates, to amend the motion to uh, that both uh, liquor license uh, the fees would uh, would would go a 50 per, 50 percent reduction from their current rate. Is that okay, Todd? Yep. Uh, you know. All right. Uh, so there's a motion, a second. Uh, that's an amendment. Any comments on that, Alderman Boyette? Um, so that's just for the two licenses. We're not doing anything for the bartenders then. This there's is just for the, the. There's nothing there's, on the floor right now to deal with the bartenders. The motion on the floor is only on the licenses. So we couldn't amend it to um, include their licenses to be half price. It's a different license. It's not on, on the agenda. It was not an oh. action that came out of committee. So, right. Okay. Thanks. I mean, I I will say this, and I, you know, the, the you'd like to help out the bartenders too, because as you someone pointed out, they're the ones who are many times they're just doing this part time and that, but but they do have a two year license. Uh, so theirs is going to go for two years if they uh, start it in June, uh, July. Uh, July 1 so and and many bar owners I know help or pay a portion of their bartenders license I know one does in particular but uh, so some do help out the bartenders that way Alderman Coons um, thank you Mayor. I, if I'm just doing the math right here I'm looking at the bigger number the um, the full liquor license uh, if we were to originally proposed at 350 down to, down to 50 bucks it's 300 dollars difference i believe there's 36 licenses in that that would come to a ten thousand eight hundred dollar reduction um the proposed change would bring it to sixty six thousand five hundred, saving us uh in my math roughly up to four thousand dollars difference it, it, it am i doing the math right i got the right 36 licenses i don't know how many just beer licenses we have um it's not a big dollar amount. Um, does anyone have a rough idea on the number of beer licenses as opposed to the full licenses? 
I, I don't have a, uh, that, that, that in mind, Alderman. We know it's less than, I mean, it's got to be less than 100. I mean, it's got to be less than 36, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, Stephanie, uh, our deputy clerk, we have about, as I understand it, about 43 Class B licenses. Is that correct? I want to say that's total. Um, that's total. And I, uh, yeah, I don't have my notes from public services and safety. I had all that math done, um, but it it's not more than 36. So if that's the number you're working with. Oh. Okay, so 30, 36 is probably the better number. Um, all right, other comments or questions? Alderman Bates, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, for Alderman Coons, I believe uh, like the more expensive license, sometimes you have to get both. Is that true, uh, Clerk Cheslock, that businesses will get both of those at once? Yep, if you want um, a class um b beer and a class b liquor so you want to sell beer and liquor you need both any other comments or questions on this uh, amendment to change the motion from the uh 50 uh fee for intoxicating liquor license class b it's from 350 to 50 and malt beverage license be reduced from 100 to 10. There's been an amendment to go to 50% of the current license structure, which would be $175 uh, and $50. Uh, Alderman Lane, go ahead. And then Alderman um, Stevenson. I'm not really in favor of this amendment because I felt like we talked through this at committee and had decided on the reduction down to 50 and 10 um, for the fees. I I understand the budget concerns that you have, Alderman Stevenson, but I feel like it was an important step to make uh, and uh, could really be of benefit to these businesses. I don't feel like it's impacting our budget to such a great degree. Um, and I was the one bringing up that idea that this isn't just impacting them for two months. This is potentially for the rest of the year. And, you know, beginning in March is when they would have been seeing great reductions in numbers of people and um, revenues to their businesses. So I'm not in favor of this amendment. All right. Alderman Bates. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Alderman Stevenson and then Alderman Bates. Well, I was trying to yeah, go back. The answer to Alder Person Kuntz's question should be in the public services and safety agenda from last time, correct? Yeah. I counted I counted 37 class BLB malt and liquor licenses. And I think that class, sounds class, right. Class B malt. I only had one listed. That was Sammy's Pizza. All right, thank you for that information. Yeah, and, and, if I, could, well, if I could just, and if I could just follow up. Sure. We, we had a discussion in public services and safety. Um, I voted in, in the majority voted four to one to pass the, and recommend the motion that's on the table. Um, but I didn't support that motion. So I, I it, it, it wasn't unanimous coming out of committee. So I have the right. So it might fail, I don't know. <laughs> but I have the right to make that amendment. Sure. Alderman Bates and then Alderman Erickson. I was just looking at it as a way to to look ahead as we've hear, heard about bartenders uh, perhaps needing a break on their licensing too. And I'm thinking um, maybe we need to share the, uh, the lightning of the load with uh, lightning theirs as well. In which case, if I took some out of the this one, it, it wouldn't impact the city double. All right, Alderman Erickson, go ahead. Unmute yeah. yourself. Unmute yourself, Tammy. There you go. I have a question for Stephanie. Um, do they come up to the licenses come up on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis? How has somebody already paid in full if they? Um, so licenses run July 1 to June 30 each year. And there are the renewal paperwork is sent out in mid-March. 
and some folks did pay in full already because that's just what they do. They have the $400 set aside for this um, and take care of it right away. Other folks only paid what is required when you turn in your application, which is the $22. So how would that affect the people that have already paid in full? So you've paid in full, you, you've, com you, you've met your commitments, and now another bartender has a better fee than you would have. How does that work? Can you rebate them? Or is it, well, you know, you did it before this happened, you so sorry you made your commitment um sure. i don't think the details of that have been ironed out but i was assuming no, we would do a refund that's exactly according, what would have to happen yeah according to director easker they would send a check back to that individual right. so it would be fair for everybody is that what you're saying yeah, that's right yes thank you there's probably only stephanie a handful of those people who've paid the whole thing i, I don't know it's probably 50 50 of oh, okay total i i don't I, know I how know. class b's fall into it but i probably have about half who have paid at least more than the 22. okay thanks anyone else if not there's a motion there's an amendment to the original motion offered by alderman stevens and seconded by alderman bates you all understand the uh amendment so a yes vote would be to go back or to go to a 50% reduction, not to go back, to go to a 50% reduction uh, on both licenses instead of the proposed, which came out of committee, which was $50 and $10. So uh, correctly stated, Alderman Stevenson, for the amendment? Okay. Uh, all yeah. in favor, so those that are in favor of that amendment, Alderman Stevenson amendment would vote aye, Opposed would vote no. Clerk will call the roll. Other person Boyette. Hi. Erickson. Yeah. Hi. Bates. Hi. Coons. No. Lang. No. Stevenson? Aye. Bellman? No. Lundrum? Nay. Hey. Steele? No. Motion that... fail. Oh, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, go right. ahead. Motion fails. <laughs> we are saying the same thing. <laughs> Thank you. The motion fails five to four four eyes five no's which brings us back to the original motion which is for the uh um what came out of committee is there any other motions or amendments seeing none there's a motion and a second all in favor of the motions will vote aye. All opposed will vote no using the, uh, as your name is called. Other person, Erickson? Aye. Bates? Aye. Coons? Aye. Lang? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Bellman? Aye. Landrum? Aye. Steele? Aye. And Boyette? Aye. Motion carries 9 0. That motion passes 9 to 0. Committee, right. recommends, committee recommends council approve the Nina Police Department participation in the Winnebago County Speed Task Force 2020 Summer Speed Enforcement Grant from June 1 to September 30th, 2020, and I would so move. Second. There's a motion by Alderman Bates, seconded by Alderman, who seconded, I'm sorry, Isn't Alderman Lenderham, go ahead. Uh, on the question, is there any comments, uh, questions? 
Any, we have uh, Cap. Uh, we have uh, Assistant Deputy Chief uh, Bernice here. If anyone has any questions, Alderman Coons, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman uh, Stevenson, I'm going to relinquish the chair to you for a moment because uh, our guests have a, a question for me before they leave. Okay, you're in the chair. Sure. Who, uh, who would you just recognize? All the person Coots? Okay, go ahead. So, so my question, you know, with with COVID, all the things going on, all the changes that have been happening in the in the police department, um, shift changes, all those kind of things, um, does does this affect that? I'm concerned about us, us, you, the police department being able to do their duties and, um, as it is with the strain of all the changes. Um, and I'm wondering if this on, on top of it, it is going to um, cause any um, issues with us trying to do the job that you have in front of you right now. Uh, not as at this time. Uh, jail operations are going to return to normal on June 1st. Uh, we started our transition going back to normal operations here in the police department, and that's going to take a transition leading up to June 15th. So basically, the first appointment for this grant would be later in the month, so it would not affect any operations or scheduling for the police department. And can just follow up. If, if, if there's another surge, spike, whatever, I, I assume we take this on if we don't if we are too busy, we don't get to this. Is that fair, or is that are we obligated to then take on certain additional duties? Uh, no, this is an overtime grant, so we're basically afforded uh, extra uh, payment if we do have available officers to assist with this, these deployments. So there's no standard that we have to have X amount of people for the deployment of this uh, summer operation. So based on manpower vacations, if we could only get 10 deployments, 15 deployments, uh, that'll be it. But it all depends. there's no basically standards that we have to hold to. A hold to. Thank you. Uh, all the personal lender. Thank you. Um, Assistant Chief Bernice, um, is there a, a way that you are currently providing equity between your patrol officers for this overtime so maybe some higher ups don't get more because they can do you have an equitable allocation i guess of of hours to the patrol people that want that uh, pretty much looking at last year's uh, statistics, it was filled by uh, all patrol officers. So last year in 2019, there was 20 days that we did coverage, uh, 20 deployments. And uh, based on my numbers here, they're all patrol officers. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion on the floor? Okay. Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. All in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, will vote no. Alderperson Bates? Aye. Coons? Aye. Lang? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Spellman? Aye. Flanjum? Aye. Steele? Aye. Boyette? Aye. And Erickson? Aye. Motion carries 9 0. Uh, Thank you. Committee recommends approval of a distribution easement underground for We Energy's work request 4491109 on the Tuller Road garage site. And I would so move. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second to uh, approve the distribution easement discussion. See no discussion. All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no as the clerk calls the roll. Alderperson Coons? Aye. 
Wang? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Spellman? Aye. Wendrum? Aye. Steele? Aye. Boyette? Aye. Boyette. Erickson? Aye. And Bates. Aye. Motion carries 9 0. That motion passes. Thank you for your report, Chairman uh, Bates. Uh, there was no regular Finance and Personnel Committee meeting. Brings us to item number 10 reports of special committees, Board of Public Works meeting of May 12, 2020. Vice Chairman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, minutes can be found on the city website. We have five informational only items. Board approved change order number one for contract 5-20, miscellaneous sewer and water main construction on Lakeshore Avenue to Robert J. Immel Excavating Incorporated, Greenville, in the amount of $5,515.45 for water service boring. Item B, the board approved change order number one for contract 7-19, Breezewood Lane and Harness Farm Sanitary Sewer Construction to Dorner Incorporated Luxembourg in the amounts of $5,105.45 for manhole size change. Item C, the board approved pay estimate number two for contract 1-20, sewer and water main main and street construction on Abbey Avenue, Clybourne Street, Bond Street and Center Street to Kruchek Construction Incorporated Green Bay in the amount of $353,850.99. Item D, the board approved pay estimate number two for contract 2-20, miscellaneous sewer and water main construction on Van Street and Monroe Street to Carl Bowers and Sons Construction Company Incorporated, Kakana, in the amount of $670,525 uh, even. And item E, the board approved pay estimate number two for contract 5-20, miscellaneous sewer and water main construction on Lakeshore Avenue to Robert J. Immel Excavating Incorporated, Greenville, in the amount of $227,201.91. That concludes my report from May 12th. This evening we had another meeting with a council action item. Council consider, oh, the, uh, the board approved, or recommended to council uh, 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 accepting the bid from Vinton Construction on contract 4-20 in the amount of $1,237,337.88, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Bates. Is there a second? Alderman Lang seconds it. This was uh, a meeting that was held earlier tonight. Um, is there discussion or anything else? Uh, there were a couple items with regards to how this contract was broken up. Jerry, for the other members, you just wanna talk to them about how it was broken up and uh, to the three phases, I believe, and, and that, just give the Reader's Digest version of that, please. I'll do my best on summarizing. Uh, first Thank of you. all, um, I had emailed the council about five o'clock with uh, an updated bid tab. The tabulation that was in the board packet for tonight was the tabulation as read at the bid opening. It was not the itemized tabulation. I emailed the itemized tabulation out about five o'clock. So I apologize for the confusion on that. Um, so this project, uh, concrete work, uh, Green Bay Road is broken into water main construction and road construction. Uh, the water main construction is uh, just uh, just shy of 288,000. Uh, that was budgeted at 236,000. Uh, so the water utility will be bearing that additional. Um, we have some sewer work that will be coming out of the miscellaneous sewer repair account. Um, and then the street work came in at 520,393. Budget was 495 on that. Part of that uh, street construction includes uh, pavement repair related to a water main break that happened last fall. So a portion of that um, will be coming out of the water 
um, payment repair account. The second uh, part of the contract is work on Teller Road and Marathon Avenue. Um, Teller Road is an extension of the work that was started last year, so we have some joint repair, and then we'll be diamond grinding that road. And then Marathon Avenue is uh, there's some minor joint repair to do, and then there's diamond grinding on that also. Uh, that section uh, bid came in at 370,775. The budget on Teller Road was 350,000. Uh, we'll have about 40,000 of the Marathon Avenue work um, that will be coming out of the miscellaneous payment repair account. Um, so the, the street portions of this contract essentially balance out. Uh, so we're, we're basically at budget there. Uh, the item we discussed at the board, um, the next item is epoxy pavement marking. This came in just shy of uh, 51,000. Um, in discussing it with staff, the Green Bay Road pavement marking is really the what I would view as the critical marking to get done under this contract. Or, get done this year. Um, Marathon Avenue and Teller Road, for various reasons, we can uh, hold off on that. So uh, uh, the discussion that we had at, at uh, the board was um, that we will bring a change order down the line to modify the payment marking quantities to just reflect work on Green Bay Road. Thank you for that. Uh... And then I do want to point out to the council, the bid has an incentive clause in it. Um, if you recall, we did an incentive clause on um, Cecil Street the year we did it because of the schools and we were trying to get this done sooner because it was a high traffic, high volume area. Uh, we also put that in the bid for an incentive clause for this project. So you'll see that in there. So if they're able to accomplish that in the time frame, uh, they could earn up to a $30,000. Is that right, Jerry? $30,000 incentive. Now that would mean over time, that would mean working longer hours than that, but it would shorten the, the number of days. And being as that this is one of our very high traffic volume areas, and a business area, I thought it was worthwhile putting that in. Um, and so that is also within the contract um, also. So I just point that out. Uh, so some I saw some hands. Alderman Stevenson. Thank you, Mayor. Jerry, um, you've been reporting out in your public services and safety uh, concerns about, and then at the last meeting you confirmed, that our discretionary funding for Teller Road isn't happening? The We had applied for um, a discretionary grant for the Green Bay Road reconstruction. Green uh, Bay Road or Teller? Green, Green Bay Road. Just Green Bay Road, Tom. Green Bay Road. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so we had applied for that uh, after the budget was approved last year. Um, and then we got word a week ago Monday that uh, we were not one of the projects selected. So the so budget were, included the full amount of the project cost. It did not assume any funding from another source. Say that again. The budget included the full project cost amount. We did not assume funding from any other sources in that budget. Which means we borrowed dollars to do the project, Mike? That's correct. I'm muted. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, so if we would have received the discretionary dollars and we would have borrowed dollars for and just simply put them into the uh, the road project fund, right? Is that correct? Right. Okay, so, okay. So well, how much was the hope amount for discretionary dollars on Green Bay Road? Uh, the hope for amount was half of our our budget number, so uh, 240, 250. 240. Oh, yeah. So okay, all right. So we borrowed 240 thousand dollars, hoping that we wouldn't have to spend it. Correct. That's correct. Wow. 
Okay. Because it was not, it was it, with that. That's the whole idea of the discretionary. We just uh, there, there was not enough uh, reason to believe um, one way or the other. Okay. Um, yeah. So then, then, then following up, it sounds like Jerry, based on the bids that we received, that um, we're going to be mixing borrowed dollars with levy dollars. Because you said you're taking some out of some miscellaneous some accounts. Is that are those, the, uh, are those operating dollars? Those are capital dollars. Okay, so those are borrowed dollars for miscellaneous fifty thousand dollars funds. Right? Correct. Okay. All right, very good. And then what's the um, my last question? What's the start time for taller? Uh, actually, we have a pre-construction meeting uh, June one on this contract, um, and they are looking to start June eighth on Tuller Road. And how long will that take? Um, what's our plan? Let's see what our timeline is here. We have uh, 30 consecutive working days on Teller Road. Oh, and we're not going to do any epoxy. I think I heard from my short period on the the, the uh, Board of Public Works meeting. We're not going to be doing epoxy coating on Teller. Well, we we bid it out under this contract. But given where the numbers fell overall, um, and also given the uncertainty with, um, I guess, what we'll be needing out at the high school, I discussed with James if if we needed to, to press to include that work under this contract or if we wanted to hold off until we have a clear picture of what's happening with the high school and if there's a need to um put the markings in assuming that the use stays as it is even though the high school may be moving um well, the high school we're in a little limbo on years. what's happening <laughs> and it's, it's, in, it's, in this product will last beyond uh, that time so um I, I guess i'd be more comfortable with a clearer picture on what's going on out at the high school before we uh, put a, the markings down Okay, but then, but then to do the markings, we're going to have to find more dollars because there's, there's well, no market yeah. because of, because of the bid results that we got. That's correct. That's I mean, if we did it under this contract, um, I defer to Mike, but I assume we'd be looking at public infrastructure um, funds to uh, cover that cost, but, or we. Um, Honestly, that, that's probably the, the spot I would be requesting if we wanted to include those markings in this contract. I would agree. Okay. I think we're gonna we're gonna have to do markings before before they open the school up. We're not gonna have that road there without you know without markings on it, based on the the fact that the school just did won a referendum and are gonna be building a new high school four years from now. We okay. can, right? right? Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with, with the thought. I just want to make sure I know what we're looking at long term out there before we start putting markings down. Um, whether we put in the turn lanes and and uh, um, markings that James has has laid out, if the high school functions as it is currently, or if that would be excessive for what might be coming down the line. Okay, fair enough. I just, we're, you know, we're, okay, fair enough. I won't say anymore. Okay. Alderman uh, Coons, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I'm not sure what it is about this project, but it seems to be throwing up several red flags for me. I mean, first of all, I take it this did not go through Public Service and Safety Committee. Is that correct? With being the contract? Yes. It went through the Board of Public Works. It nice. didn't go through Public Services and Safety. I'm concerned that a $1.2 million project had gone through a committee just hours before this meeting. It has incentive clauses. It's got multiple departments and different utilities involved. It's got additional budgets coming in for miscellaneous budgets. It's coming, it might go over several years because you're talking about getting done, some things done this year, maybe next year. All those things are going on. We're hearing about it right now. And the most information I have on this thing is a number and a name. 
I think that's totally inadequate for what we're doing. I, I think we need to get a better handle on spending $1.2 million and knowing what's going on and understanding the <clears throat> nuances of all the pieces that go together for this. Um, I don't know what part of Green Bay Road we're even doing. Um, can you at least tell me that? Yeah, it's Green Bay Road between Cecil Street and the Fox Point Roundabout. Uh, so I asked that because last time we did this thing, <laughs> we did some things at Green Bay Road and it was Main Street, and I was hoping um, we would have put a roundabout there, but I didn't, we didn't even go over this. There's just uh, such a lack of information. Where this is, which projects, which budgets, I, I'm just amazed that we're doing this in this fashion. Um, and just all these other things, so many things go through, um, then they might go through park and rec, then they go through finance, and then they go through um, public works. This only goes through public works, not public service, service and safety. It, with, with, with in public works, it's mostly um, staff. It's very few um, elected officials. I'm really, really concerned about how we're doing this. All the streets only go through Board of Public Works, so we didn't single this street out, right? Jerry, I mean, that's, they all went. They all went through the CIP. They all went through the budget. Questions were asked. Uh, explanations were given during the budget process. This has been in the five-year plan for some time. But I mean, you're you're right. It doesn't go to a committee. Well, what I only say is, I mean, Jerry just rattled off a bunch of different. These, there's there's ten different things going on here. This isn't just one thing. This isn't one place. This isn't one budget. This isn't one. You, it, it's part of the utility that's coming out of a water utility, which is a totally different animal. I can't believe the, the Water Commission isn't involved. I just, uh, I understand that we looked at some pieces, but I don't think there's anyone on this committee, on the council that can tell me all the different pieces of this piece, of, of this of this puzzle, and all the, animal, all the pieces of this. Anyone seen the incentive clause? I don't think so. It's a concern. I, Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. Uh, okay. I appreciate your comments, uh, uh, Alderman Bates. Thank you, Mayor. If I'm not mistaken, we've been talking about this in the uh, public works for a while now, just because we've had trouble at. Uh, well, part of Teller Road was done already, so that was kind of a. It it led us into this. Uh, the the work that was done on between Cecil Street and um, the Fox Point Roundabout, we had some major water uh, work done there. Was it last year, Jerry? Last fall. Yeah. So, last fall. Yeah. It was. Some of the stuff has been percolating, and this is kind of just the culmination of it. But uh, I can understand that it sounds like it just kind of flew out of nowhere. But it's it's kind of been there, and uh, uh, the mayor did discuss uh, earlier about incentive clauses for a project like this. So we, uh, at least me on this committee, I was not surprised with what was going on. The net, Jerry, just uh, the net uh, budget to actual, we are within, is that correct? Yeah, on the street side, we're within. On the water side, it's about 51,000 over. Um, and then the pavement marking would be on top of that. And we're over on the pavement markings, but you're going to have these discussions about what we can do with the dollars available. And then as Alderman Stevenson points out, we still may have to potentially find some additional dollars if someone wants to move forward on more pavement markings, right? That's and and with regards to the water department, Alderman Coons, uh, or uh, uh, City Attorney Godleski, the council I don't believe gets to have any say in the water portion of it, do they? That's the Water Commission, correct? That's correct. And the they, they water... often they often do uh, do contracting in conjunction with the city for 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 usually better prices. Mm-hmm. And just so, I mean, again, my comment was yeah. that I can't, this didn't go through the Water Commission either. Uh -huh. So I mean, it's just, I'm not saying we should have control of that. I'm saying it's multiple um, departments, multiple you know, utilities. This is, this spans 
a lot of different areas. I mean, yeah. do, does uh, do Mike or Jerry, uh, does this have to go back to water? No. Or not? No. no. The, the, oh, sorry, Jim. I'm sorry. The, the Board of Public Works is charged with overseeing the contracts that have been approved through the uh, Capital Improvement Program. So the, the, the substance of what's going on here in terms of the, the structure of the, the rows that are being done, the, the extent of the construction and so forth, is, is all done as part of the Capital Improvement Program. All that the Board is charged with doing is uh, putting out for bid and supervising the bidding process and making sure that that was done properly and then making a recommendation to award to the lowest responsible bidder which is required by statute. So so if this was if this project was 50% over budget for the water department the board could still approve that without the water commission's input. Uh, the Water Commission, um, uh, under the ordinance, the, 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 the council has a, uh, charged the Board of Public Works with the responsibility of supervising the bidding process. My understanding is that when a situation like that comes up, the, um, the, the, there is a consultation between the uh, Public Works Department and the Water Department as to whether we should look at the, the, that aspect of the uh, project to redo. But uh, no, the, it does not need to go back to the Water Commission unless, okay. unless, the, unless it's uh, turned down. <clears throat> and that's what I thought it was. But I and you do have the president of the Water Commission on the the committee board of Public Works. But but regardless of that, I mean, it is a, a big number, and I assume I have been in that committee where uh, board of Public Works where because there's staff on it, they have they have said, let's take this to committee because they haven't felt com comfortable as staff making a decision on right. something. And I can't think of some of the things off the top of my head, but I do recall uh, Director Isker saying, uh, we should send this to committee. So I think the committee at least is very responsible by saying, hey, this is above and beyond the Board of Public Works. And so they have taken things, to committee, do you recall them, Mike? In the past couple of years, we've taken a couple of things to committee. Is that right? Specifically, I think when we were getting into those situations on a couple of contracts where the final payment was being deferred based upon some oh, yeah. specific action that yeah, needs right. to be placed, right. and um, I think the board felt that it was important since it was the final payment, and uh, it had to meet some criteria that the contractor had to. Um, uh, fulfill that instead of the board making that decision, we felt that, that the common council needed to make that uh, final payment okay. decision as well. Thank you. So, so Alderman Coons, I, I respect what you're saying, but I mean, I look at the percentage of the contract, what if it's over, under, you know, uh, the overall contract here, we're within the limits of what was previously passed by this council. Uh, the water is a little bit over. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's evidently, uh, I, I looked at the dollar amount, not the percentage. Uh, and that's why I, I would hope we would just move forward, but your comments are well taken. Alderman Bates, you have a comment or question? I was gonna agree with uh, Director Easker in the sense we oh, had okay. one time where the final payment was gonna be small and the, and the uh, previous to the final payment was much larger, which meant that when it came to council for the final payment, it would have just yeah. been kind of uh, uh, just a small amount of money and it didn't make any teeth with uh, getting the contractor to finish up the job. I remember that. So yeah, so I, I can't argue, Alderman Coons, that these are big dollars or big projects. Um, the good news is, is we are, you know, ahead of schedule, you know, uh, the, the dollars, if you take up all our projects, I've asked Director Kaiser to keep an eye on things and see which ones are over, which ones are under up to this point. And I would hope maybe at the next uh, public service committee, he can kind of give us a little update on where we're sitting from a, in a macro sense on the contracts that have been already given. Um, you know, that the prices aren't, I, I think, as good as we were hoping to get this year. Um, it, it it kind of uh, uh, you know shocks me that you know we were hoping with the uh, uh, passage of uh, 
um, getting rid of the like prevailing wage that that would help contracts you know start bringing the contract wages down and contracts but those things haven't happened and a lot of other factors but we're i think jerry and mike are staying on top of it on where we're at and especially no more than this year when as you folks pointed out earlier we don't know what revenues we're going to have in that so um i i'm comfortable moving forward but that's your decision at this point. So is there anyone else who'd like to make a comment? Alderman Stevenson, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanna make sure we all, we're all clear with the authority that the Board of Public Works has as it relates to managing projects and dollars. Now, the um, city attorney said it, Jerry said it, and the mayor said it, that the project 4-20 has come in minus water has come in under under budget at or under budget is that correct because it, because not here let me let me before i ask that question the responsibility that the council gave the board of public works was to manage projects and dollars that had been approved in the capital budget it doesn't allow the board of public works to spend more than the council has approved for a project. So I'm I want to make sure we're clear to, to confirm all their because I tried to keep track of what Jerry said happened here and the water on Green Bay Road is two hundred and eighty eight thousand. The road was five hundred and twenty. We had budgeted four hundred and ninety five thousand. I'm assuming that thirty five the extra thirty twenty five thousand is coming from the water department. That's what he said. So Hopefully the water department will pay that. I don't know how that works, but I, I, from an accountability perspective, uh, the water commission needs to be aware of that formally. I, I couldn't keep track of all the work on Teller Road, but I had the number of 370,000. The budget was 350. Uh, I don't know what 775 meant uh, because I had a B next to it. So uh, my my question here, and it, it's long and it's drawn out to prove a point is I'm confirming all the McCoons' concerns here that we're, we got uh, a, an adjustment to a, a $1.2 million project at five o'clock. Uh, we changed the contractors. I mean, I understand mistakes happen. So Van Stratton isn't the contractor of choice by $400,000. It seems odd to me that the bids would have been that much uh, separated as they originally came out in the agenda. But then Bitten Construction was given the contract. And if so with all this, I, I'm not comfortable saying that I'm that the money that the city council has allocated for this project is being met within bar, the dollars that were assigned to it. And I'm concerned that we may be taking dollars out of other miscellaneous accounts to meet that budgeted objective. So if you guys are telling us that the borrowed dollars that we have designated for this project are going to pay for it, then then you've met then you've met my perception of the responsibility of the Board of Public Works. But if we're taking dollars out of other accounts and then saying we we're within budget, I'm a, that's a little gray. And the council needs to be able to allocate those dollars because we didn't allocate fifty thousand dollars for a specific capital project. Not that we wouldn't, but then, then every project might have $50,000 of the miscellaneous money allocated to it. Council has to be made aware of that. Well, Jerry or Mike, I think you're, he asked a specific question. I mean, we're not, we're not subsidizing this contract with additional dollars, are we? The, Go ahead, Jerry. Okay. The items that I mentioned, um, the, uh, sanitary sewer um, let me put it this way on a number of our contracts we run into situations where the work doesn't fall neatly within the budgeted line item but it's work that should be done as part of the project just to get it out of the way so in this case the sewer we've got a, a lateral that we're gonna take care of on Green Bay Road that's coming out of the miscellaneous sanitary sewer capital account. Um, 
We had mentioned the uh, pavement patch on uh, the Green Bay Road Cecil roundabout and uh, using the water utility um, pavement repair account on that one. Um, the section two Teller Road and Marathon Avenue, um, we had planned on getting Marathon Avenue, Avenue diamond ground as long as we were doing diamond grinding on Teller Road. So that we had designated miscellaneous pavement repair dollars to cover the Marathon Avenue section of the project. Um, so I guess I want to make sure I'm 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 clear, Alderman Stevenson, on on your question. Are you looking as, as far as the board? authority um let's use teller road and green bay road as our examples are you looking for the the budget for green bay road to equal or exceed the bid number for green bay road and then likewise the budget for teller to equal or exceed the bid for teller are you looking at well, them individually or are we well, looking I, I, <laughs> I, yeah i like i think the rest of the council um uh, takes a look at the budget amount that's in our you know in our budget book mm -hmm. and says we, we, we budget five hundred fifty thousand for the sewer work or whatever else. yeah and and then we look at, then when the bids come in if if the capital work that's defined in each of those line items matches but but that doesn't mean i don't want i don't want us to be correct in in managing where other dollars be relevant but how does the council manage that <laughs> how do we know that we're not i mean how how do we know when we're using discretionary lateral um justification to take it out of a capital fund and take it from a another capital fund that we borrow from or how, how that all works i i, I I, I I and I don't I, I wouldn't expect to be able to do that, but when you know, when it comes last minute like this and it's one point two million dollars, this is what's going to happen. We're going to ask like, wow, yes, no. we're going to take, you know, how? So what? I, at, at the very least, I mean, we're going to approve this, but I'd like to make sure I understand the scope of work and compare it to what was in the capital budget and what the funding sources for everything that's in the, you know, the 68 page line spreadsheet that you guys put together god bless you whoever put those together but um what match what where are the dollars are coming from so that i because i have the responsibility fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers to make sure i understand where the dollars are going and because all the personal lender might want to be thinking that some of that fifty thousand dollar miscellaneous sewer money might go real well over in on the island somewhere, but oh well, that's we use that for Green Bay Road. <laughs> oh, we did. How did we know that? How did I know that? Or, you know, we, and, and I agree. I realize it's a gray area, but when when these things happen, then, then somebody's going to have to answer the question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alderman Isker, did you have anything to add or not, or uh, Director Isker? Um, Mayor Isker, would you like yeah. to respond to that? <laughs> Uh, the uh, I guess just to uh, affirm what what Jerry's saying, I I don't disagree that I think in the future that it would be probably better to have this stuff laid out um, beforehand so that as Jerry said, here's here's what here's what this is costing and here's where the fund here's what the funding sources are. Um, I guess from my perspective, this is really not that unique. We've had contracts like this with a lot of different aspects to it where you've got street you've got sewer you've got water all mixed together and i'm comfortable with the fact that this does meet the budget scrutiny uh that is in this that that is in the 2020 capital budget uh again the only one that is over technically is the water amount and as it was discussed um that that typically is a is a uh inner working between public works and water um if I, if i'm not mistaken i think director uh, mock may very well report that to the water commission um 
I, I thought that he probably does that, but, uh, <clears throat> but, with, so. but that's well within what I consider to be the full spirit of the uh, of the of the budgeted uh, of the CIP uh, 2020 capital project budget in that it, it this is not unique to have a number of sources sort of funneling down to pay for a certain project like this because it is so uh, wide and expansive and uh, you know has a lot of uh, a lot of aspects to it but I think in the future Jerry it would probably be helpful to have a little bit more structure to the uh, to the um, the final pay uh, and final budget amount. Actually, a final approval. Final approval, yeah. And and then Todd, uh, just so Jerry is clear, the the number, the four hundred thousand dollar less uh, number, nine hundred fifty thousand. That was a mathematical error. That's why they didn't get it. They they did. They did, they did something wrong in the math of the unit price, and so their bid was actually a lot more than that 950000 Just Yeah, I, so. I was in I, I heard that. And like oh, I okay. said, it didn't, it didn't surprise me because of such a gap in between the low bid and all the rest of the bids. It was like 500000 dollars 500, $600,000, maybe $400,000, yeah. something like that. So, so we and follow the clarify, math. Right? That's an error from the, from the bidder, not an error by the city. Right. 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 We we caught the air, right, Jerry? We caught That's it as correct. we went through. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Coons, back to you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I don't want to beat this to death. I think uh, what Mike's talking about was was my suggestion, and that is that we um, document and lay this out. This should be a should have been a three page item that explained everything from which different funds were taken from, which work we're doing, where that work was going to be done, um, the different funds we we're taking from. All those different aspects. What what came instead was one paragraph, three lines, I believe. That was it. <laughs> um, I am I'm gonna vote against this. Not that I don't believe in the great work people do, and I that, and I think that we need to get this work done. But I have not given the been given the tools to be able to give the proper oversight for me to vote yes. That's a simple answer. I mean, you you've got to give me enough information to say I understand the different all the ten different pieces you're moving on this. And that all different budgets you're coming, you're taking us out of. And I, 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 I bet you did everything this perfectly, but I have no way to verify what you've done. I have no way to know of the. I mean, you got to understand this. You're talking at least six different budgets, if not more. And you're moving money around in different areas and then throwing in another piece over here. And you want me to say, yeah, that sounds good. The incentive clause, which I've never even seen, I have no idea what that means, or could it be done better, or is that right, or is it in the best interest of the city? No idea, because I haven't been given any of that information. All I'm asking is, and, we, and I, we've done this before, I, and I get it, it's just gotten worse and worse, and this one's just more jumbled than, the, than, than some other ones. All I'm asking is that we document what it out so we all can read through it prior to this meeting and understand it, and then you know, it's, it's probably fine, but particularly take things out of miscellaneous, this miscellaneous funds always bug me because it becomes a slush fund of miscellaneous things that we can just throw different pieces at that aren't under any great oversight. They're miscellaneous. We're not, they, they don't, they're not tied to anything. They're not, they're just dollars out there that can be shoved into projects to fill extra pieces that aren't that are left laying over because the budget didn't meet. You know what happens is the budget didn't match. The budget was too high for this item, so we're going to take this other budget, this other budget, miscellaneous item, and cram it in there. It just to me isn't the way you do things, and particularly without any documentation. So I'm sorry to be long-winded on that one, but it, it just it, the more I look at it, the more frustrated I become with this with this one, given the limited, limited amount of information that we've been that we've been provided. I think we deserve more. All right. Anyone else? Um, there is a, this one is a, a vote. We had a, a motion and a second. Alderman Lang, you have the last word. Go ahead. I just want to say I am on Public Works. I did not see this as more jumbled than other projects uh, we planned for this. And this was the low bid 
of eight bids that were presented. So I feel that we should move forward with this. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? And we will talk about this more, uh, Alderman Coons, tomorrow or the following day and see how we can improve the process, okay? All in favor will vote aye. All opposed will vote no as the clerk ca calls your name. Alderperson Lang? Aye. Stevenson? Aye. Spellman? Aye. Glendrum? Aye. Steele? Aye. Boyette? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Bates? Aye. And Coons? No. Motion carries eight to one. That motion carries. Uh, passes. Thank report. you. Thank you very much for the report. Uh, Community Development Authority, any report, Director Hayes? Thank you, Mayor. I have nothing to report this evening. All right. How about uh, report from the Library Board, Alderperson Erickson? You had a meeting today? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, we met today at 4 o'clock. We had a virtual meeting. Um, I have two things I'd like to report. Since the library has started curbside um, pickup, they have um, distributed over 4,500 items to the public, and that's going very, very well. They have changed. If you have driven by the library, the curbside pickup was on Wisconsin Avenue. Now they have changed that to the circle. So you will be getting an email if you put books or items on reserve. And you don't have to reserve a time. You can just go text them your name or give them a call and they'll bring it right out to your car. And um, apparently that is going very well. Um, they plan, the library plans to be open on June 8th. They are working out all of the details right now, but um, June 8th is the, the start date for that to be open. And it will be different than prior to this, but um, they are moving forward. So that is good news. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you very much. Alderman Bates, did you have a question? Yes, Alderman Erickson, I was hoping that when they get some of these guidelines for what they're gonna do to open on June 8th, would you please let us know what they are, report that out to us? Absolutely. It is a work in progress right now. They have a reopening plan that they're working through, they're working through staffing, they're working through, um, it looks like right now, um, they will limit the amount of time that patrons can spend in the library, and they will limit um, the amount of people in the library at one time. So they're working out the details of that now. Um, it looks like people will need to wear a mask when they go into the library. They are not sure how they will handle young children um, with masks. That's an issue that you know is, is going to come up. But they are looking at um, all of the concerns right now, and they are. I, I can say that they're really being very diligent with it. Are they? Are they able to find some of those plexiglass uh, barriers that we had uh, that Alderman Stevenson helped out with for voting at the library, perhaps? They have purchased the plexiglass barriers and they have um, the plexiglass that they can use in front of a computer screen as well. Oh. Um, they, there are so many different areas that um, they have to look at. Um, some libraries are looking at where you will not be able to go into the stacks and pull a book. They hope to be able to do that um, with, you know, guidelines etc but they're they're being very very uh cautious about everything that they're doing thank you i spoke with uh, director rob today before the meeting and she uh updated me um i mentioned to her that the sooner they have a firmer plan uh i would appreciate it if she'd share that with us and with the council so that we have some idea what to tell our constituents um i did tell her the only uh, the concern i had was the requirement of masks uh i think that uh with children that may be 
difficult, but um, I, you know, to me that that is uh, Menards is kind of going through that right now. One of the retailers, and uh, they require it, and they're a private business, uh, and they have that ability. But uh, that I'm letting the library board and them flush it out and bring it back to us and see what they come up with. But Okay. Anyone, anyone else have any suggestions or anything for Tammy or anything? Okay, so uh, that's, uh, uh, thank you very much for that report. And then Alder, Alder Person Erickson, you also, do you have any report from the Nina Arts Council? Yes, I do. The Nina Arts Council had a virtual meeting last Wednesday. Uh, we talked about the opportunity of doing some virtual art projects. Um, it's kind of hard to plan not knowing how this is going forward, but one thing that we kind of jumped on is the Nina High School graduation is next Wednesday, uh, May 27th, and they are having a procession from the high school, and that is at 11 a.m., and they will, um, high school students will be going with their parents in cars, and they will proceed from the high school, um, going down Teller Road, um, and then they will turn onto Cecil Street and follow it to South Park, um, and they will head towards Riverside Park, and they will go through the downtown. So the police are involved with um, assisting traffic control. They'd like to encourage people if they would like to go on the, the route to wave to the students and congratulate them. Since they don't have a graduation this year, it's one attempt to make um, their graduation special. Um, the Arts Council has worked with a variety of um, businesses and um, the library and the museum about getting signs put on their electronic boards or their reader boards to congratulate the graduates. So if you have or know of anybody in the city that could put up on a, a board, congratulations. Um, Nina High School graduates, um, that would be great. We are making some calls right now. And then also, um, if you could wear red and white on the 27th to honor the high school graduates, that would be great. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much. Um, all right, uh, there are no petitions that I'm aware of. Uh, any council directives anyone would like to talk about? If not, uh, we move on to unfinished business. Other Under unfinished business, uh, Director Esker and I uh, have been meeting uh, with regards to the CIP. I know that the uh, President of uh, Council had brought that up last time about how we were doing on that, what we were coming. Uh, I, I'll be honest, uh, with the COVID uh, coronavirus stuff going on and all the different stuff that was happening uh, that seemed to not make, you know, the top priority at that time. Uh, and now we have, uh, you know, come to the point where we, uh, we believe we have a proposed schedule. Uh, we have, I've been in contact with Ald Alderman Stevenson. I sent him a, a little bit ahead of you folks today, and then I sent it out to all of you about four o'clock, I believe, somewhere around there. Mike, um, you want to just give go over the proposed schedule with them and the timing and how many days and how it somewhat reflects where we were in the number of days, but uh, and see if it's acceptable or see if they have any suggestions. I'm going to run to my office for one minute. Go ahead, Mike. Sure. Um, I, I believe the mayor has forwarded the uh, proposed timeline with, that we have amended um, initially that we set up all the way early back earlier in the year. And uh, essentially, we're looking at um, uh, trying to have the five-year plan distributed to council by, on or bef uh, by Friday, June 12th, and uh, with a common council workshop. Monday, June 22nd, potential if we need a second workshop on Wednesday, June 24th, with Common Council uh, adoption plan for Wednesday, July 1st. Uh, that is, that kind of fits, it kind of takes the old 
timeline and, and fits it into a new uh, calendaring situation, given the fact that, as the mayor indicated, of the uh, uh, priority shift because of COVID-19. So the idea is, and if you recall, we already have borrowed the money for 2020. So this is just to affirm that number, uh, that capital number for 2020, and then uh, go to the four out years. So that was what we came up with. Um, the mayor, as he said, just has not had the time to, to review this. You know, we've got a lot on the plate with regard to the next four years. So this was, we thought uh, gave us the best balance of giving him a little bit more time to to go through this and present it to you and give you time to review it before we have the workshop um, and adoption. Any uh, conflicts, any co comments? Uh, Alderman Bates, go ahead. Yeah, the only thing I saw in it was uh, the Common Council adoption on July 1st, and I know oftentimes we, we uh, skip the July 1st meeting in July because of the 4th of July holiday. That was my only thing. We thought with um, part of it was, you know, we may, good chance we may be meeting because we pushed back a few things because of all this Corona stuff. So yeah, you're right though. That did, we did think about that. Anyone else? You know, well, the only thing I had was the uh, the schedule's fine with me. I, I, I'm glad we just had some structure to it. The uh, not a huge issue. First workshop, usually we only have one, but we have one scheduled for June 22nd, and then June 24th might be a problem if we have to have a second one. I would just wonder if we couldn't maybe could if we need a second one uh, incorporated into the public services meeting on. Third. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Historically, the last few years, because this is the five year, we've only had one night, correct, Mike? Yeah, right. Rick, I don't you never know. Tapped over to a second night, but that would be fine. We always leave Jerry to the end anyway. So if we get to the point where he's uh, we oh, can't yeah. get him on the first night, we can just uh we'll just have him sit there for four hours and, and then make him come the next night anyway. <laughs> That's when he talks about all these capital projects he spends his big money on. <laughs> but, uh, Alderman, I, I think we'll Alderman, be okay. Yeah, that would be okay. So there may be a conflict that night. Okay, and if anyone else has a conflict that they're aware of, please let it, Mike or I know right away. Alderman Boyette, go ahead. Are we anticipating being at the building or doing this? We're going to talk about that under new business, but we anticipate being at the building social distancing and practicing the guidelines at that time. Okay. But and we'll talk about that business. under under new business too. Thank, uh, thank you. Um, so uh, if that schedule is, uh, that was a draft that we sent out to you. So if that schedule is good, uh, other than the, the potential for the second night, and we'll talk about, Mike and I will talk about that tomorrow. We will get that out uh, to everyone and make sure the department heads and everyone know about that. So under, under unfinished business, we had the, that's what I had was the CIP schedule. <clears throat> then we will move into the new business. And uh, at the request of, uh, under new business, at the request of uh, the mayor, I would like to, uh, we, based upon the county putting uh, their resolution on last night, what we talked about earlier, we had uh, put on a resolution number 2020-09. Uh, and this resolution is uh, regarding uh, waiving interest on property tax payment installments that were due on or after April 1, 2020. Jim, you whispered in my ear earlier tonight uh, about something with regards to this would you like to yes, share we, that i'm sorry i i sent out to the uh, uh by email to the council 15 the revised uh, uh resolution that uh, would be before the council if, if accepted as a substitute uh, resolution for 
the original one. Uh, the the uh, uh, it has the changes that are required because of the uh, uh, adoption by the county board without uh, the affidavit uh, provision in there that was in the draft that was reviewed by the committee of the whole earlier tonight. So Adam had given me some amendments to amend the resolution. I don't have to do them. We don't have to do them then. Uh, the motion could be to accept the uh, the substituted amendment that uh, is pre presented uh, before the council at this time, and I emailed okay. a copy of that to the council members. So the substitute amendment takes care of these amendments that Adam had given me, correct? Correct. Okay, I understand now. Thank you. Jim. So, uh, Jim. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Jim, you sent an email about resolution. 202009 at 718, and you also sent one at 839. The, the so later assuming... one, the 839 one is the correct one. This was just done last night, and we were trying to get it to mirror the county resolution um, versus have to do individual amendments and that. So, and we 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 put it on originally not knowing what was going to pass so this is kind of late but may 31st is the third installment is due correct mike right and so because of that uh we wanted to get it you know we didn't want to have a special meeting we didn't want to pass this in june where it would have created probably more you know um questions and that so um so there is a substitute amendment uh so substitute i guess resolution. Sub, substitute resolution so if someone would like to move the substitute resolution that would be the appropriate motion i believe that correct jim and then we can discuss correct. it yes i'll make a motion i'll make a motion to approve resolution 2020-09 that was mailed to us at 8 38 uh central time by our city attorney Second. There's a motion by Alderman Stevenson, seconded by Alderman Lendrum. So we can discuss it. Uh, questions, Alderman Coons, go ahead, and then Alderman Bates. Just a, a quick one about, I don't know, structure here. Um, we're looking at a resolution 2020-09. We keep on calling it 2020-09, even though we're talking about two or three potential resolutions with the exact same number on it out there. And it's the one that you just sent. It doesn't seem very legal to me. Um, do we give it a number? Do we call it 2009-B or something so we can at least, we all know what we're voting on, we all know what we passed at the end of the day? It's my only question. Um, the, uh, the, the resolution number is, is assigned uh, chronologically based on the, 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 we don't assign to different numbers to the different versions. The one that's before the council right now is the one that was described by Alderman uh, Stevenson in his motion. And uh, 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 the, the, the original uh, resolution did not appear in the council packet so that the, the, that's why this one can go forward in this manner. And the reason we didn't put it in the packet was we decided to have the cow ahead of time to give you uh, that that's when we would present the information to you is that right that's correct because we yeah yeah it's not the normal not the normal way i will tell you that so but uh alderman bates go ahead thank you the one two three four five sixth whereas it talks about um Secretary designee Palms extending it to May 26 with certain modifications. That seems kind of a slap where it's like certain modification was what it was struck down. I mean, could you leave that whereas out? It didn't really take effect. The the sixth whereas? Yeah. Whereas on April 16th, 2020, Secretary designee Palm, is that the one you're referring to, Alderman? Yeah, instead of certain modification, you, you could say which actually ended on what date. I mean, as opposed to saying it was supposed to go through May 26th, and it really didn't. It went to May 20th when the Supreme Court, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, May. As, as much as I, I, I don't want to hamstring the council here, I don't want to tie your hands. I, I believe the state language, uh, state legislation says what's passed by the county 
must be mirrored by the local government. And so they it have has to, in there. It has to be the same language, and they passed that language last night. All right. Okay. Let's go. If unless I'm Mike, Mike, that's how you understand yeah, it. Is that exactly. And for to clarify, for Alderman Bates, I believe uh, that language specifically refers to the extension that took place on April 20th or whatever it was. April 16th. To yeah. April 16th to May 26th, but the modifications, I believe, refer to the fact that what was extended to May 26th was, mo was not exactly what was in place on April 16th, but what was extended um, was modified once it went to May 26th. It doesn't have anything to do with the um, Supreme yeah. Court. It, it was what was taking place back in April, if I if I understand that correctly. So it's I, I think it's um it from my perspective it's fine. Okay. Not 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 terribly relevant. A any other comments or questions? Alderman Stevenson, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I I, I don't have a copy of the county resolution, but um, yeah, it looks very similar to this. But I don't think the county resolution that was passed had had as many references to Nina Mayor Dean Crawford as in the third whereas and the references down below in section two and three where maybe make reference to the city of Nina will waive property rights and those kind of things. So I don't think we're I think in contact we're mirroring, but this isn't the just for the record. It, the structure is probably the same, but we probably had to add things that are relevant to the city of Nina. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you for that clarification. You're probably right. So, the structure and the content has to be similar with regards to the waiving of the interest. Okay, thanks, Todd. Uh, I will also say that you know, I mean, I, I do. Todd mentioned it earlier that. Stephanie uh, Alderperson Spellman did a really good job of uh, shepherding this last night, which it, it it ebbed and flowed on the county board about three or four different times uh, during the discussions, but uh, it finally passed. And they, they tried to even do procedurally to try to uh, derail it. And uh, she was able to uh, withstand all that. So it was, it was a good, good, good job, well done. And I think you're going to see uh, our neighboring municipalities take care of this, take advantage of this too. So, anyone else? If not, there's a motion and a second to do to uh, do the substitute amendment, uh, the substitute resolution number 2029 that was delivered uh, to you uh, at eight something tonight. Let's see. Uh, correct, Alderman Stevenson. All right. All in, thank you very much. All in favor yeah, of that? All in favor of that? We'll vote aye. All of opposed will vote no as the clerk calls your name. All right. Alder Person Stevenson. Aye. Spellman? Aye. Lendrum? Aye. Steele? Aye. Boyette? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Bates? Aye. Coons? Aye. And Lang? Aye. Motion carries 9-0. Thank you. That motion passes. Um, item number B, uh, we had a uh, resignation from the Board of Review, so I'm still looking for someone for the as an alternate to the Board of Review. So if anyone knows of someone who may fit that role, please let me know. Uh, I do have a couple people to uh, look look at, but uh, uh, also mayor's appointment to the loan assistance board. That one uh, has been open for a while. They have enough to meet, but I uh, haven't been able to find anyone there either yet. So Stephanie just puts these on for me once in a while, hopefully, hoping that we came up with someone. So if someone knows of someone, please let me know. Uh, with regards to an announcements and uh, new business and announcements, I have just two things, a couple things. I want to uh, ask the council 
if they have any preference on how they would like to proceed with regards to the concept that I had emailed the council earlier or late last week uh, with regards to outdoor expansion of premises. Um, the Oshkosh uh, passed it uh, last night. Other, some other communities are passing it this week also. Uh, I think time is of the essence. We have two ways to go on this. And in, in my view, we can either send this proposal concept to committee work and work it out, or we could relegate it, delegate it to the community development offices that would develop the plan and issue the expansion of premise permits through Chris and Brad. They have spent the day over looking, looking over what Oshkosh has. Um, so I guess I'm just looking for some direction here on how we would like to proceed with this. Um, other thing that, uh, and you heard a couple of the people tonight say what an asset this would mean. My main intention was before this came out was to help stop another way to help stop the spread and to social distance, spread out the number of people within these businesses and restaurants and bars rather than having 50 people in a facility. Maybe they can have 30 inside and 20 outside. And I really think that it'll have a positive impact that way. I don't think it's going to, you know, expand the number of people, you know, from, from 100 to 130 that they're going to take those 100 and they're going to be able to spread them out a little bit. It's a temporary solution. Oshkosh put theirs in until October 1st. Um, I don't even know if we have to go that long, but we could, the Oshkosh seems to have developed a pretty good uh proposal and um brad or chris do you guys have anything that you'd like to add i think i can mayor as the council knows we already permit uh beer gardens uh sidewalk cafes um, so we have the the structure in place to handle this um, i think the intent here would be to allow expansion of those areas most likely into parking existing parking spaces um, the the main change that i think we would advocate is in a for a temporary circumstance like this would be to approve these on a, on a at a staff level um, as you know typically the beer gardens the cafes require review oftentimes at plan commission and always review at committee and council, uh, which of course can take anywhere from two to four weeks of time to get that through a process. So uh, we would be advocating for an accelerated review. Um, it would at the staff level as opposed to council. Uh, we have, in this case, we would be looking at to start would be um, businesses that would be locating these uh, expanded service areas on their property, again, most likely in parking. I would advocate a waiver for our downtown beer gardens, excuse me, take that back for our sidewalk cafes. Most of the businesses downtown already have sidewalk cafes, uh, but if there should be one or two there that don't, we would put them basically again through the same process with the exception of the council approval. Um, we are in conversations with the bid and the ability to perhaps do something similar on our public parking lots, but that is not part of this initial proposal. Or with the public parking on street parking, that's not yeah. part of this proposal. That is correct. Okay. Uh, Alderman Boyette had her hand up early. Um, yes, yeah, so I have two things I want to say. First off, um, uh, the city attorney, I'm curious as to the legality of this. I know it's a different time and, and we're doing something totally that we wouldn't normally do given the virus and the situation, but we do do these 
permits for businesses because we've had we have the sidewalk ones and whatnot and so i would want to keep within that because that is within the law i would want to keep within the policy and the procedure that we already have i'm wondering expediting that is that something because it's under the emergency like eoc thing or what and then secondly with the businesses downtown that are going to want like a parking lot spot or a parking um on street parking space to, to utilize the outdoor space um i'm concerned because we already have parking issues downtown and so if we're going to take away another couple of spots in front of each building um because we have what three or four alcohol establishments five downtown um you know that's potentially five more parking spots that are gone so i'm just curious like how we're going to do that well with, with regard to the expedited process that uh, uh director hayes uh mentioned uh the the the, the, the council could uh uh delegate to the staff the authority to to expand the, the uh, outdoor premises under this temporary program for the remainder of this year for, in order to, to accommodate the, the uh, uh, social uh, uh, distancing principles and, and uh, also to, to get the uh, additional uh, business for downtown. That could be done uh, very, very simply, very quickly and be in place so that, that uh, at the same time that the uh, staff members could be working towards that uh, uh, proposal with the with the, the establishment so I don't see that as being a problem necessarily uh, uh, I did not uh, see the uh, I know Oshkosh just passed it yesterday but they apparently were working from that, those resolutions I, I haven't seen those to know exactly how they handle it but uh, certainly uh, the council could delegate that authority to the staff in, the, in, in this limited circumstance and by doing that that would totally bypass the committee that normally does this uh, or would the council, they be involved in that as well? Uh, well, because we're talk, talking about a relatively short period of time, the more um, um, the more reviews that are done, the less time there is for the, the program to be implemented. The idea, I think, here is at this because of the unique circumstances that we have going on there, is to delegate the authority to the staff to to to, to do it within the parameters that have been discussed. Um, uh, and, and, and it could require a, a, a report back from staff on what's happening. But I think the idea was to expedite the process. But uh, again, it's, it's again, it's the council's prerogative as to how they want that to be handled. Okay, thanks. Alderman Bates. So are you planning on, on bringing the guidelines that uh, uh, community development comes up with in front of one of the committees or the cow and then and then we just can decide whether they can just move on their own with these uh, guidelines. Is that it? Is that a question for Director Hayes or myself? Uh, I was thinking the mayor. Okay. Where do you plan? And so, as I as I understand it, the council could give that authority to come up with those guidelines to the staff. But we have to approve those, right? No. So they'd come up with guidelines and then they'd enforce them and we wouldn't have anything to say about them. I don't like that. I don't mind that they would enforce the guidelines, but I'd like to see the guidelines before we put them out. I, I, I assume you could delegate this to the staff and they could start issuing permits or whatever, and then they could report this back to the committee, public works or whatever, the next meeting and and then if, if the public works wanted something changed, they would have to um, make sure that those uh, places were aware of a change. In a, in a conference call I had with the other municipal attorneys through the league, uh, a number of municipalities were going this route, and it was a matter of expanding the outdoor space to accommodate social distancing. Um, um, the, 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 the resolutions that were adopted, as I understood it, uh, granted that authority to, to staff to do it, but it was for a limited time, 120 days this year. So it was just through the, the outdoor season um, uh, through September, basically. Um, so it, it's not like it's, it's gonna go on forever. It's just a short period of time. It, it ends up um, uh, terminating at the end of that, uh, that period. Director Hayes, is it feasible 
for you to uh, do these guidelines, get the program going, bring it, and then bring it back to committee, and and then possibly have to having to adjust something. Yeah, it's really at the dis, you know the directive of the council. Mm -hmm. One thought I've had, and we haven't spent a ton of time on this, but as I mentioned, we already permit this in our ordinance. So what I would propose or one thought I've had is to basically take what we have in the ordinance now, what we have in the municipal code, and then make any types of modifications that would be necessary. As an example, the code says it has to come to council for approval, right? So that would be one that we would strike um, if there's any other modifications. But I believe what we have in the ordinance now probably gets us 90% of what we're looking to do. But you would have, but for instance, I I assume uh, you have in your code you have some sort of permanent fencing or or fencing, and yeah. how, how I envision or how I see other communities doing it are maybe snow fencing or something. So you'd have to make that modification. Yep. So okay. we require a fence or a wall. We would probably soften that to some kind of vertical demarcation. Whatever that might be, it could be rope. I, it could be, you know. I see. Probably less substantial than what we typically call. But you're absolutely right. That would be one of those minor modifications that I think we would make to our current ordinance, recognizing that they're temporary. And then you have like hours of operation, uh, mm -hmm. music, uh, all those things are currently in. So the right. things that Alderman Bates, you may be worried about, are already in that outdoor. Um, cafe outdoor garden thing and you've all voted on them so uh but that I, I was just bring... voted on it we voted on it with the uh, idea that it was a minimum number this could be a lot more and that yeah. would be my concern i i'm not i'm not disagreeing so uh anyone else alderman boyette and then alderman coons and then alderman stevenson go ahead how about if we just include somebody from that com from that committee with the staff so that way marge is ensured that you know well and, and not just marge but all of us you know but i mean because they handle these on a regular basis and and when it comes out of committee we trust that they've made all the necessary and i'm not dissing staff either but i'm just saying i think i would feel better knowing that we have somebody working with staff on this That's all i'm trying to say okay alderman coons I guess I'm on the opposite end of the scale. I would give staff the ability to do quite a bit, be bold, um, as long as we can revoke expansions if someone misuses it or we don't, you know, someone decides to play loud music or get out of hand, we just can revoke that and bring that back. If we have that ability, then I'm then I'm more than willing to give quite a bit of latitude uh, to staff. And I would hope that we'd expand uh, beyond what we're doing in the simple sidewalk cafe. I'll give the example of Green's Four House. You know, yeah, okay, we they already have a, they already have the sidewalk cafe. You can fit maybe eight people there. That's not nearly enough. I think it's it's vitally important for this city to first of all keep people safe and give give restaurants the ability to, to uh, first of all be outdoors, which is probably the safest place, and then give people the ability to expand. Um, and also then it, at the same time to give our Businesses a chance to not go out of business. Those are two huge, huge things that I think we need to address. We need to address now while the weather's nice. We saw it all right now. I see it outside my window today. The fatigue from this, everyone's getting together and, and all rules aside, they're just doing whatever they want, which is kind of caught, which could cause some problems. We got to give people um, a safe way of doing these things. And I think we can. I'd love to see it be more bold. I, and I have no issue giving staff quite a bit of flexibility. They basically do all these things for us, come to us and say, we talked to them and we did all these things, here, approve it, and we approve it. It's kind of what we do right now. Um, so, I, and I understand the, the different the different uh, um, viewpoints, but as long as we have a chance to say, nope, we're gonna revoke that, it's too far. At some point, I, I would let them, I would let everybody in staff go, I don't wanna say a little while, but get pretty creative here and do some really creative things outside the box here and uh i'm fine with that so 
Alderman Stevenson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the uh, the mayor sent me the Ashkash um, proposal or ordinance or whatever it was that there was. Um, outdoor, temporary outdoor seating area review procedure. And I shared with Chris and the mayor and Brad some thoughts about it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Ashkash uh, policy relates only to property that the establishment currently owns. And nothing in that document that I saw enables that policy to utilize city public right away. Unless I'm wrong with that. I I would trust your your review of that. I haven't looked at it that closely, but I would concur that that's probably yeah. the case. Okay. okay, so we really we really have two different possibilities here, I think. I think and I think the easiest one is if a establishment has property that they can expand into and they own it and the only effect is it takes parking out we need to be concerned staff needs to be concerned about where that parking may infringe but they should have the authority to do that I, I, i'm okay with that when we start getting into the whole public right-of-way discussion yes we have procedures in place somebody somebody said we had uh, we have something in our ordinance for 90 percent of what is being dealt with here I don't know that we have 90% of the request to take parking stalls downtown, for example. No. So I'd be I would be more hesitant, and not and not that I want to slow this down, but if that's if we, if we want to go all encompassing, then I think that the burden is on staff to say, here's what we think we want to be able to do to help our businesses, and then let the council react to that. And if it takes you a day to get it, fine. Schedule a meeting. We can we can sign on, you know, at whatever to, to deal with it. We're much more flexible now than we ever have been before. So, but if we're if we're starting to you know, entertain um, public right of ways, closing streets, and in those cases, you're going to have some of these neighbors happy about taking public space, and you're going to have others right next to them saying, "What the hell are you taking my parking for?" So that that's and, and I don't know that we have a lot of experience with that. So that we so as a council, we're gonna be the ones that are gonna get the, the calls and say, Well, I you know, so showbiz down downtown never has enough parking for himself. And we take two stalls down there and we're gonna get crucified. Not that we can't overcome it, but that that's that's what I wanna see what we're talking about here. And if we wanna do that, fine, just let me understand what the criteria is that you're gonna use to make a go no go. So if I could, Mayor, I, maybe I wasn't clear, and I, and I agree with you 100%, Alderman Stevenson, with one exception. I actually think we have three options, two of which we are proposing to deal with soon. The third is in the future, if at all. The first two is, one is private parking owned or controlled by the business. Two is the, the sidewalk cafe or uh, cafes that we currently allow so in the public right away but on the sidewalk in in essence in consistent with the ordinance that we have the third option that one that you have the concern with taking parking in the downtown that's nothing that we're ready to bring forward at this point i i i think we've actually as i mentioned earlier i've kind of put that we've kind of put that on the bid and said you as a bid need to decide as an org as a group how do you want to proceed with that if at all because if you to your point you benefit a bar it becomes a disadvantage to the mercantile business next door so we're going to really need to hear from them before we would ever advocate um something to the council to deal with public parking in the downtown so that at this point is really off the table in my view okay. Well, but it, because it was one of the lead items when we first started talking about this, so knowing that that's it's there makes me a lot more comfortable with saying, "Go ahead, then you guys manage it," because then you're absolutely right. You know, you know all the requirements. So I'll shut up. 
Yeah. And one of the other things Todd had mentioned to me was, I mean, the staff's got to recognize even if a, a bar or restaurant, if they said we want to use all our parking lot for expand our premise to all of our parking lot, they would then put their parking out into the neighborhoods and that wouldn't be good either, right? I mean, because then you'd be infringing on other people. So staff isn't okay, going to let yeah. that happen. Uh, they're going to say you can have, you know, a certain area, square feet within your parking lot. As I understand it, they would they would make that judgment call instead of you, the elected official. Uh, Alderman Lundrum and then Thank Alderman you. Bates. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my my our our businesses are in crisis and I've talked to several restaurants and bars and they're not overwhelmed. Whatever you see on you know the Green Bay news about people crowding into these facilities is just not happening here. We are we're having the opposite problem. People are very reticent. So I really don't think we have a lot to worry about with parking and overstepping parking bounds. I, I think I, I would be thrilled if we had parking problems. I just, I think it's going to be the opposite. Um, so my bigger concern is what we always do is we bog things down. And so I was really interested in this idea. I think it's, I think we can um, absolutely put our full trust. Um, Chris and Brad are very conservative and they have never proposed anything radical. And for us to take it on and even to throw in a, a committee member into their meetings, I think is a mistake and um, frankly, rather disrespectful to them. But however they wanna bring it back after the fact, um, I, I am perfectly fine with. I, I'm just concerned about bogging this down in some sort of committee situation because it will be, and then half the summer will be over and you know you throw some bad weather in there for summer and or a hot summer or a rainy summer and it then it's pointless so we've dragged it on this needs to be done immediately thank you all right thank you for your comments um alderman bates go ahead yeah i have no trouble with community development managing it i just think it is something that is is something important to me to look over before they start they said they're going to do minor changes here and there well, for all I know, it might have been the one thing I had in there that made me comfortable. There are bars in, in my district that abut back ends of people's yards. I just want to make sure that we don't have, you know, the yard doesn't need to have a fence and all of a sudden they can walk up to the fence and be hanging over somebody else's yard. That's, I mean, I just want to know what changes they're going to make to what we have in the yard. I don't think that's a big thing. They can, you know, write it up. They have to write it up somewhere. And if they send it out to us, I would say we could have a cow in that same night and, you know, 15 minutes and we're done. I just, I think if we don't, if we let them do it all and it's something to do with alcohol and food service, I think it's one of those things that, you know, it's, I'm going to get the phone calls and I'm not going to, I'm going to say, well, nobody, nobody in our government, no, no elected official passed it or even looked at it. Mayor. Who just said something? I'm sorry. I did, Mayor. If I could, if I could step in. Go ahead. Did, Go ahead. I, I called up the Oshkosh ordinance that was adopted earlier this week, and I think on Monday, and it, it, it was a ordinance adopted by the council that set the parameters for the program. What what made it more streamlined was once those parameters were set up, then it was delegated to staff to to implement the program. Uh, I don't think we could do. Uh, uh, just willy-nilly uh, address it without having some standards that were adopted by council, either by resolution or, or ordinance. And that's what was happening in, in, in the various communities that were discussing that in, in the conference call today with the league. So I would suggest that uh, we could put together, we could mimic what Oshkosh did. It looked very comprehensive. It also provided for uh, a way to deal with the violations of it through through an immediate hearing and also uh, a, a sunset date of October 1st that the, the, the whole program would, would end at that time so that any permits that were given were, were, were time limited and, and, and it would go away on October 1st without any further action by the council. Okay, uh, we're let me just sum this up uh, from what I'm hearing. Um, I mean, if it, if it would make people feel com more comfortable, Brad and 
Chris, and I'm just throwing this out there. They could come up with the parameters for the program. Uh, as Todd points out, we are meeting by Zoom. We have a, a Tuesday. This is nothing's going to happen probably before this weekend, which is Memorial Day weekend. So I agree with Carrie that time is of the essence, but you know it is Memorial Day weekend, and I don't think we can throw together something that quickly. Anyways, uh, these people are going to have to apply, fill something out. Um, if we we have a public works meeting scheduled Tuesday night, right, Jerry? Is that are we going to have one or not? Is there a public works meeting scheduled? Public services. Public services. Yeah. So if the council members, because we're meeting by Zoom, if they're available to meet 5:30 on Tuesday night, I think we can listen to the parameters that Brad and Chris come up with, and the council could take action. If I could, Mayor, just so, just to, again, I feel, I don't know that I'm interested in copying Oshkosh. We already have, we have all the requirements. We've already developed them. We've already have them in an ordinance format. We already implement them. What would you be looking at in the modifications are minor modifications to streamline the process. Again, removing the the formal approval process and dealing with some of those items that are typically associated with a permanent structure, like the fencing, right? It, we're not that far away. Um, I don't know how critical it would be to the to the restaurants to be able to have an expansion or if it's even possible by this weekend. I actually think we could get it done. Now, whether we can get them to fill out the application and get it in and all that in two days, in a day, really, that, that's probably a stretch. You're probably right about that, Mayor. Yeah, I think it'd be tough. What about violations? What, 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 what enforcement would you have then if there wasn't anything? Uh, I mean, the enforcement that you would have is you'd have to go through the regular channels. I think there needs to be, a, you know, oh, I, I'm just asking. Yeah. The provisions that, that other communities have been looking at, and, and it was reflective in the Oshkosh ordinance, was that they, they would uh, rev the staff would be authorized to revoke the uh, um, uh, the temporary extension for the violation. There is the stat statute would require us to, to or due process would require us to allow them to appeal that, but that would be appealed to the the uh, community development department and then uh, all the way to the council. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that, that's the process that most communities have followed, and, and, and it could be done rather expeditiously. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to have a full-blown debate here tonight. I just thought that if there was some unanimity, unanimity, or if there was, a, you know, coalesced around something, uh, we could move forward. But Chris points out they believe they have the structure in place to do this. Urban Lane, go ahead. Um, I'd like to say I'm in favor of giving staff the authority to do this to expedite the process. Becky? Alderman, Alderman <laughs> Boyette? I am okay with moving this forward fast, but I don't feel, I feel like it is inappropriate for us to be giving up all of our rights to vote on this stuff. So they're gonna devise everything and it's never gonna come back to us. If they're gonna start doing all the other stuff. We're never gonna know, we're never gonna be involved because they're gonna streamline it and it doesn't come back to council. And I was voted to vote for the people, voices of the people in my neighborhood. And I'm not gonna have a voice because we're gonna streamline it and give it all the staff. I, I have a problem with that. Okay, Alderman Lundrum. Uh, Director Hayes, do you have a solution for that? Um, I'm not clear. Solution for 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 um, giving comfort that we are still representing and still, I guess, doing our checks and balances in this very unusual situation. Is there something that you have thought of that we can work with that? I haven't, but but there's a couple of things that come to mind. One would be, you know, first of all, the to Alderman Boyette's comment, I don't know what the percentage is, but
but it's high of the things that we do at the staff level that never go to council, right? There's never a building permit that goes to council. There's never an assessment valuation that goes to council. So there's not a, there's, there's that already happens to some extent. I do think that there's a, there's a pretty significant difference in my mind in modifying the standards or requirements of the code and sharing that with council versus having council approve that because what always bogs us down is the meeting schedule. And Alderman President Stevenson's correct, the council could certainly call a special meeting to do that. I would suspect that if you saw the changes that I don't even know what they are yet at this point, they're gonna be fairly minor. Um, but I but we're more than happy to share that with the council. And that that's easy enough to do via an email. If we have to schedule it, it gets a little more complicated. Um, in terms of back to Alderman Boyette's perspective, I think if we awarded or granted these permits at the staff level, there's certainly nothing that would limit us in reporting out what was approved where and how. So I, if there were issues, council would certainly at least know where the permits were issued. I don't know that I expect to see a lot of these, but there certainly could there certainly could be businesses that ask for them. I, I don't know if that answers your question completely, Alderman Lindrum, but that's my initial thoughts. Yeah, it really wasn't my concern. I was trying to make the other aldermen who were concerned feel more comfortable. But the problem is that the ordinance currently has the permits and the extensions uh, the council grants that. So the council will have to give the authority to to, to the staff to be able to do that. Uh, and what, what is the, the unique aspect or the, the expedited aspect of the programs that have been done in other communities is instead of having the council approve each, each the council delegates that authority on a temporary basis for because of the COVID situation. Uh, and the staff then delegate, issues those permits on, on, a regular, on a regular basis. But right now, the staff doesn't have that authority to issue those permits without uh, uh, council approval of that. Jim, Jim, am I allowed to give the staff that under the mayor's emergency powers? I don't know, Mayor. I could look at that. Not, not that I'm promoting. I'm just asking the question. But Alderman Bates. I think I want to clarify it. I, I don't have any trouble with once we are we approve what the guidelines are. And as Chris said himself, we don't know what the little changes might be. If once he fleshes that out, let us know. We'll give you the authority and the blessing and whatever. But I can't let some other group change something, change how it's done. And I have no idea what guidelines they would be using. It's just, I think, what a government official needs to look at. And I, hey, I think you. that's kind of the mayor's point. I, I don't, if it took us a week or two to implement, so be it. The, the real value becomes, and if we have that and we're in place and we can issue these permits fairly quickly, that's where the value comes in. So yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah. Mayor, if I could just follow up. Uh, Alderman Stevenson had his hand up, and then Alderman Boyette. I think, I think there, there's a couple of realities here, and it, it, this is there's nothing on the agenda tonight right. that ident identifies this issue. So if we're looking for action, now we're going to violate another law. <laughs> right. To, to give Chris, so so I would I would ask that Chris create. A summary of those changes that he thinks he needs to see made and the scope because I came into this meeting thinking that we we're going to be talking about public parking and he's telling me that he wants to be able to move swiftly on property that these establishments own or in our current uh, curbside sidewalk policy identify that get it to us and we'll schedule what we need to do and debate it because we have the right to debate it and then we'll vote on it. But I, I, I don't know that we're gonna, so anybody looking for us to authorize Chris to do that, we can tell him that, but we can't vote on it tonight. And right. actually, we're probably in violation of law by even having this conversation. I brought it up under uh, 
other business. So yeah, I understand. And I, 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 I that's why I threw out that's why I threw out Todd the, giving the staff Thursday and Friday to develop it. And Tuesday, since there's a public works services meeting, maybe we have a, a meeting before that, a special council meeting to get this portion done. I, I, given, given the environment, I would try to get it done earlier. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would second Todd's motion if he's making one to um, direct to the community development department to create that document that we then review on Tuesday. Am I allowed to make a motion like that, given our current agenda? Uh, I don't think so, uh, Alderman. I think the appropriate thing to do is uh, I, we've got the sense of the council. Uh, we can initiate the staff can initiate that and, and ask for a special meeting that the, the alderman, the, the, the mayor, and, and uh, you as council president could authorize it to go ahead with on Tuesday. So we can ask we can ask Chris to create what he needs to do to be able to act in the manner that he thinks is the most effective and that the council review that get it to us as soon as you can and we'll schedule a time to deal with it. Right. And if that means it may be Friday morning, it might be Friday noon, it might be Friday afternoon, whatever, it might be it might be Tuesday morning. But um I I think I think if we're not talking about public right away, like streets I think this is, let's get the ball in the hands of the people who can make this happen. And we'll always react to it because we do have a structure in place. All right, I think we have some direction. Um, okay. So we will have guidelines prepared before the end of the week um, for your review. And then we will talk about, we'll, we'll get something set up for a special meeting on Tuesday to, to deal with it. And I would ask if you if you get those, you will get them before the end of the week. Don't hesitate to call me with questions prior to your meeting. Is that okay? Okay, and okay so that's public service that, that's public services and safety. So that means I need to be concerned, or we need to be concerned about the availability of Tammy. Help me out, finance. Uh, Tammy, Tammy Christopher, Christopher, Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. and Danae, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you guys can take a look at your calendars, the availability for Tuesday, either before 6.30 or later in the afternoon, after the meeting, that way we can try to put a structure together. Thank you. We could meet uh, Monday morning at nine because for the first time in 30 years, I won't be walking the parade route. So that's kind of a bummer, but- uh, We could all walk the parade route, social distancing and have a discussion <laughs> right down the street. We can meet, uh, tomorrow, meet tomorrow. You can tell it's after, yeah. <laughs> you can tell it's after 10 o'clock. Um, well, as soon as Chris and them get that, I will update Alderman Stevenson and then we'll talk some more. Um, last, or one other thing that I got, I just want to make the council aware that uh, as uh, I'm doing a proclamation um, with regards to Nina High School, uh, the senior class of 2020. So uh, next week is their graduation week and uh, I'm presenting this to Brian Wonderluck and Mary Pfeiffer. I sent them a copy today, but uh, basically uh, it just says uh, very quickly, I didn't know it was gonna be this late, but whereas Nina High School is a vital piece of our community, whereas the senior class of 2020 is an integral part of Nina High School filled with innumerable future leaders of our community, whereas each graduating senior of the class of 2020 has overcome unprecedented challenges in the face of a pandemic, successfully completing their academic careers via remote learning, sacrificing their final semester in order to keep our community safe by adhering to physical distancing guidelines, whereas the Nina High School class of 2020 has successfully completed, concluded the semester, which was unexpectedly halted due to COVID-19 and has met all requirements for graduation, 
whereas their graduation ceremony was scheduled for Wednesday, May 27, 2020. Now, therefore, I, Dean Crawford, mayor of the city of Nina, along with the city council, do hereby declare the week of May 25th as Nina Rocket Week and Nina Graduating Senior Week. And in Nina, urging all of our citizens to acknowledge, praise, and celebrate the achievements of the members of the Nina High School Class of 2020 on this week, dedicated to honoring their unwavered courage and their dedication to successfully completing their degree requirements in these unprecedented times, signed and sealed by the mayor, uh, Nina Wisconsin. I just, it's something small, but it's pretty important to these kids. So I wanna congratulate each and one, every one of them and there are gonna be future leaders in that class. So uh, I'm gonna make sure that they get that when they do their parade. Marge? Could you put something in the newsletter with that as well and maybe open it up to other kids that maybe didn't go to Nina High, like you know the parochial schools or were homeschooled? Uh, sure, we can look at that, absolutely. Yeah, newsletter. Uh, I was it's thinking about doing St. Mary's Central also, but uh, uh, St. St. Mary's Central. So, yeah, that's a possibility too. So, uh, these are the graduates from Nina, and uh, so I started with them. Thank okay. you, though. But other than that, uh, people have uh, any other business? Uh, I know I don't want to be too late here. Originally, I did want to say a few things about, uh, uh, you know, the the challenges and that uh, that the staff has been under the last couple months as long with everyone else in this community. We have done the best we have could, and I think we've done a great job of continuing the services. Uh, I have been trying to communicate pretty god darn often with President Council President Stevenson, who's been a tremendous help all the way back to this election uh, back in April. You know, we really did pretty well uh, in that election. And it was because of people like Todd and, and Stephanie and Adam and, and that it all worked out really well. But the whole staff, whether they were working at home you know, and there were questions there, but I'm here to tell you, they, they, you know, they sent me reports, they sent me telephone logs, they talked to their supervisors regularly. Chris shared, Chris and Jerry, people shared what was going on with staffs. Public Works uh, was working, Nina police, um, they put measures in place to keep themselves protected while still serving the public. The Nina Menasha fire did the same thing. So um, we really did a pretty good job. I know some people in government were maybe uh, were in, in the public were looking more, they were looking for more from the mayor, were looking for more from the city council. And I will just tell you, and it kind of bugging me a little bit, and that's why I'm going here is that, my disappointment is in the legislature, in the governor, you know, this could have been handled differently and I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not pointing, taking sides, but they, they, their inability to come up with plans that they could both live with, then put it onto the county. We found out, you know, the county did rules to try and guide us, the county, is our health department. They run our health department. City of Nina, we no longer do our own health department. So we rely on the county. The county believed they had the authority to do to extend the orders. That lasted less than 24 hours. So the public was kind of, you know, my phone in the last week, I've never taken so many phone calls from the public, from small business owners, wondering what's going on, looking for guidance, asking how come the mayor is not putting up his own regulations? How come the mayor is not doing his own extension of the governor's orders? Um, and it's been frustrating times, but I don't have those types of expertise. My job is to work with you folks and come up with the best plan to protect our workers, protect their community, protect their citizens. Now that we, we're, we've opened up, we're all going to hopefully try and, and, and persuade our businesses and our people that the best way to you know, not have financial you know, chaos is to open up, but that we have to be smart about it. We have to 
you know, push washing hands, social distancing, all those things. The things that we can common sense things, but we don't have the expertise that the health department and other people have. So we've done a pretty darn good job. This staff has done a real good job of, of working within those parameters, trying to help me along with Council President Stevenson. We've been in a lot of meetings uh, over the past six weeks trying to do what we deemed best with very little lack of direction from our state officials and that's uh disappointing but i want to you know thank everyone who's did this the building itself here at city hall will be opening to the public on tuesday this coming tuesday the day after memorial day um, we have got a lot of measures in place to protect staff to protect the public a lot of new things have been implemented, so you're going to see a lot of changes here. I want to thank the finance director, uh, Isker, who, you know, just having that window with the drive through window, uh, that allowed people to still conduct business here. And uh, I'm reminded all the time that we need to do more and more to get people the ability to buy that permit at home to that fire permit and those types of things. We're very close on the water department and we got to step it up and get some of these things done. But the fact is still every day while we've been closed and I've been here every single day of this pandemic, including Saturdays, including Sundays. And I can see some people just want to do business at city hall for some reason, uh, because we still get a lot of traffic, but, uh, Overall, I just want to say thank you to a lot of people and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, uh, the citizens of this city know that there was a lot of people working really hard these last six weeks to try and make good decisions and protect them. So that's what I'm going to say and leave it at that. So thank you. The next time we, we you see us, hopefully on TV, I'll have a haircut. Uh, and that's been a, a long time coming. So uh We'll, we'll talk about the other thing I'd like to just throw out here lastly is when does the council feel comfortable about coming back into the building? When does the council, uh, the committee structure, want to work within the confines of the building? Uh, one of the staff in our dis decisions was we're going to try and utilize the council chambers more often so we can social distance versus the Hauser room. So Todd and I will be talking about those types of things, uh, whether or not the next council meeting will be in this room or whether we want to wait a little bit yet. So if you have comments on them, please direct them to either Council President Stevenson or myself so that we can start making some decisions about how we're going to operate in the future. Thank you. Todd, you got anything you want to add? No, my offer of cutting your hair just like mine still stands. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> please, please, please. The options out there. I have very little gray yet. I have not found much gray, so I will tell you that. So, uh, although my wife says it's there. She's a smart woman. I'd be willing to share my haircut technique with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike Easker did not have gray hair, I don't think, when I got elected. So uh, I, I don't remember Mike with the, you know, having the gray hair this long. So, so um, thank you very much. We've been visited by at least two cats tonight, one child. Um, we've had nine aldermen and uh, six staff. So I don't know if there were other, any other animals or anything that visited us, but uh, it was uh, fun to, to see and watch. So. Stephanie, you have a very active cat who likes to be on the camera. <laughs> she is the worst. Yep. <laughs> the worst. So thank you all very much. Does anyone else have anything else for the good of the order? If not, move to adjourn. Second. Alder Alderman Stevenson moves to adjourn. Seconded by, I'm sorry, Alderman Boyette. There you go. Alderman Boyette uh, seconds that. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose no. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Broadcasts of the City of Nina Common Council meetings are produced by University Studios of the University of Wisconsin Fox Valley. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, City Committee meetings, meeting agendas, 
and other documents via the city website, www.ninagov.org. NINA residents can express their opinions about city issues or about these broadcasts by contacting the mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or by completing the electronic feedback form on the city website, www.ninagov.org. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited for playback.